Hey everybody, how's it going? Peter Semetti here, publisher and founder of Alterna Comics, and uh, I've got a lot to talk to you about tonight. Uh, there's so many things going on. Um, we have a lot of a lot of things going on right now. Uh, you can see in the headline of the of the show, it says that we've left Comicsology. There's big retailer news. There's titles back in stock. And uh, we got a couple other things to talk about, too. Uh, it's a Friday night, so it's also kind of a, a fan Friday sort of thing. It's a Q&A for you guys, too. If you've got questions, uh, please let me know, and I will be happy to answer them. Uh, hey, BoogieBot, how's it going? Keith, what's up? Uh, Ross, Youper. Hey, Pat. Hey, Ara. Hey, how's it going? Uh, speaking of which, Ara, I got your postcard from the other day. Yeah, thank you so much. Very kind of you. Thank you. Awesome stuff. Thanks for sending that, Ara. It means a lot. Put a smile on my face. It's a nice Yoda card. Uh, Daniel, what's up? How's it going? Andre? Uh, Slider and Pedro. Hey, hey, hey. All right. So some of you may be wondering, uh, what, what do I mean? We left Comixology. Well, for those of you that have been watching, listening to the show for a while, uh, or even paying attention uh, to Comixology with, with Alterna being listed on there, we haven't had a new Comixology book listed in, I think, about eight months. Uh, at least nothing for 2020. And we've been transitioning everything over to the Alterna Access site, including digital comics as well. So let's take a, uh, let's take a look, because now we are finally completely migrating over to alternaaccess.com for digital. So we are no longer on Comixology. Uh, you should still, from what I've been told by Comixology, you should still be able to have access to your book. So if you did download them on the site or on the app, you should still be able to get them and read them. But there's nothing going to, nothing's going to be there anymore for Alterna. Uh, right now on Comixology, you shouldn't even be able to see an Alterna logo. It's, we're not there anymore. Uh, there's many, many reasons we've decided to do this. Uh, the biggest one being for years now, I've had a problem with a lot of their different practices with certain things in terms of uh, any kind of concern regarding piracy or anything whatsoever. Um, and obviously, there's always going to be piracy regarding digital comics, but it didn't add up with a lot of the things that were going on and a lot of the, the piracy sites would specifically mention we're getting them straight from Comixology. So that was kind of a weird feeling to give them print ready files and see that they end up wherever. Um, so that was kind of weird for all of us. Even the creators, a lot of them felt really weird about that. But what can you do? Even now, what could we do about piracy? You can't really do too much. But then the other part of it was that and this was the bigger part, way bigger. Uh, and yes, Mike, yes, you can still uh, you can still read the books. Yeah, it says, can we still read, download uh, the alternative books you purchased on Comixology? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, the bigger part about why we decided to leave Comixology is the fact that once they started their submit program and they kind of became a retailer slash publisher, uh, they really, really slowed down on pushing any other independent titles. Everything was funneling more towards Comixology Submit. It took three years to get a sale going on Comixology, to get a promotional sale. Something like 12 emails back and forth, constantly just trying to get something going to see if we can get some traction on the site. When they finally put the sale out, they buried it. It didn't go out to newsletters. I was on their newsletter. I didn't even receive it. And it was over the course of a weekend, and then that was it. We barely got a boost in sales from it. And the sales always stayed kind of flat. So since we've transitioned over to just selling them directly on alternaaccess.com, our sales have been for digital sales have been three times the amount so it just doesn't make any sense for us we have way more control over what we could do here 
And also they look great. If you've got a tablet or anything like that, I've got them downloaded here to a tablet that I've got. Uh, and you can see they open up their PDFs. And let me just show you guys. Here. So you've got Void Walker on screen here. That's just as a PDF. And this is what you download on alternaaccess.com slash digital. 99 cents an issue. And then you just scroll through. And you can even zoom in and out as you please. We don't have guided view or anything like that. But the books look great. And these are yours. These are, uh, they're region free, essentially, right? So no DMCA stuff, no DRM stuff, nothing like that. Uh, DRM free. So um, yeah, this is all from alternaaccess.com. And again, this is this is Void Walker number one. There's a couple other titles as well on there. We've got 80 in total. Another one that looks really great is, uh, let's see, Gods and Gears right here. Looks great. And of course, it's not the same as newsprint. It looks better on newsprint. I would agree with that. You know, but the titles still look great. Every single issue, 99 cents on there. We've got 80 available right now and moving away from Comixology. Let's see. Uh, Michael says that when I put my first issue up for digital sale, I made $10. That's it. And it was the featured comic on Comic Central for a week. Uh, I never made more than $10. Boy. All right. Yeah, that, that kind of. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Statistical Zero says, congrats. I couldn't be happier to see Alterna growing like it has. It's rapidly becoming one of my favorite comic companies. Hi, everyone, by the way. Hey, Statistical Zero. How's it going? Let's see. Uh, Simonon says, uh, Comixology went down the drain when Amazon took over. Uh, it certainly feels uh, not necessarily that it went down the drain, but that they felt like they didn't have to improve. It felt very similar to Diamond. Uh, Comixology in the beginning, I absolutely loved it. We had a really wonderful, wonderful rep, an account manager on there, and she was fantastic. And then when she left, we had a, another great rep as well, and he was great. And when Comixology got taken over by Amazon, I'd say the first year of it was still okay. And then it kind of started to get weird. And it became more and more difficult. And soon enough, interactions for the most part with brand managers became so bad on there. I had to actually request, I had to go up the chain of command and say, look, we have to get somebody else, somebody who's actually going to do something with these titles. The information was wrong, credits were wrong, pricing was wrong. Release dates were wrong. It was very similar to what was happening to us with Diamond in the past year before we had parted ways with them. And then they transferred us over to somebody else, and they did a great job for the time being. But it was never the same. It just wasn't. And in terms of helping you to grow and to actually, I mean, they're the biggest digital platform for comics. And it just plateaued completely. And then the sales flatlined, too. It's just... I wish it was a better experience, but it just wasn't. Uh, people so far seem to really be enjoying getting their digital comics straight from Alterna. It's been great. Um, and also, if there's ever a problem, like let's say, let's say the download link doesn't come through, you can email us and we'll get you the download link. That actually happened to a customer where they had tried that and, you know, they said, hey, I, I tried these that they didn't work. Something's not coming through. Uh, can you help me out? And I said, sure. You know, here's the links. And that's it. And they download them and they were good to go. And again, these are your digital files to keep. So we could stop selling digital comics tomorrow. Whatever you bought, you would still have. So, and I know digital comics isn't something we push too much because we all love print way more. <laughs> but we like to have the, uh, the option there, especially for international customers or people who want to try before they buy, let's say. Uh, you know, they'll try one issue. You know, not every single issue. And they'll just download 99 cents and then, oh, wow, I like this comic. I'll, I'll buy the rest in print. So there's a uh, there's a good place for, for digital. It just it wasn't, for us anyway, it wasn't through Comixology. Uh, unfortunately, I wish we could have made it work. It was getting more and more uh, hectic and complex and frustrating as time went on. 
All right, let's see. Uh, Ross says, I uh, got my alternate order earlier this week. Loving Tinseltown and Blood Realm. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. And I uh, said, but uh, no pancakes, though. P uh, Twitter Peter made uh, promises uh, he shouldn't. Uh, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Poor Ross. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The only breakfast food that we can get you from Alterna would be uh, the Mighty Mascots cereal. Well, not the cereal of Mighty Mascots, but uh, this is what I mean. Right. So right now, Mighty Mascots is on Indiegogo in demand. It is currently at 16156 Congrats to Keith Gleason, Anton Bandy, and Ian Warianto. That's the creative team of Mighty Mascots. Uh, they are thrilled about this, and they, they love you guys. Appreciate the support. 334 backers on board. Again, it's in demand right now. Uh, the campaign ended on July 10th, but uh, they're still raising funds until they go to print with everything. And Keith is still adding on a lot of stretch goals, a lot of really good stuff. Now, what I mean by the breakfast food, uh, he's got here the Mighty Mascots uh, Breakfast Club member perk, which is the featured perk. It's $50. And this was recently unlocked. See, 152 people have backed that tier, which is great. Uh, so recently, uh, let's see, where is it? Let's see. So breakfast club members, uh, that's these guys right here with that perk. Where is that? That is these guys. Yeah, there we go. With the $50 perk. They receive a single serve of cereal. So there you go. <laughs> So that's the breakfast food that we give you guys. No pancakes. Pancakes don't ship well. Ross, come on. Come on. All right. So uh, everyone's going to get, everyone that gets that breakfast club uh, member perk is going to now get a single serve box of a random, uh, you know, cereal. <laughs> Keith is going to, he was on here the last time and he was talking about, he was going to get rid of the raisin bran and the, and the mini wheats. You can send them to me. I'll take them. But anyway, uh, so we've got all these great, great stretch goal bonuses here. Uh, so Keith did a great job with this. He says, uh, unlock stretch goals, back any perk, and get all these items added to your order unless otherwise noted. Uh, eight button set of the mighty mascots. These are one inch pin back buttons one mighty mascots bookmark one mighty mascots three character sticker set mighty mascots nine character trading card set an exclusive mighty mascots 11 by 17 fold out poster with artwork by christian rossi from void walker and trespasser and uh you know the breakfast club members you guys you get that single serve that random box of cereal He's got a, another really fun one here. That once they reach 20,000, he's got a stretch goal here. Everybody gets a branded. This is like a, a cool branded uh, Captain Honeyflakes eye patch. So everybody can be a uh, everybody could be a pirate. <laughs> it's fun stuff. This is a really fun campaign. So if you haven't checked it out yet, please check it out. The uh, link is in the description. All kinds of great great exclusives here a lot of fun stuff and uh like i said it's in demand right now we've also got another great campaign on here uh t-bird and throttle which is an alternative book as well this is at nineteen thousand five ninety, very close to the twenty thousand dollar mark two days left uh, josh is definitely going to hit the 20k mark uh, and thank you guys for supporting this as well uh, this is the last campaign for his book uh, the alternate edition obviously is not featured on this campaign it's it's just josh's exclusive uh his imprint his publishing uh, division kind of thing that he does this is just what he's putting out and he's got a lot of great exclusive stuff for the fans here uh, the alternative version will be alternate giants coming out towards the end of the year and that's something that's going to be on the newsprint of course 499 price tag all that good stuff uh, number one, I think, is going to be out around like October. Uh, number two, probably around December or January, and so on and so forth till the four issues are out. Uh, it's going to be a quarterly release. So backers will get 
all their books from this campaign first. So don't worry about that. This is a really great uh, superhero series. A lot of you guys have been wondering, oh, when's Alternative going to get more superhero stuff? Even though like half of our books are superhero or superhero-ish, you're still like, when's Alternative going to finally get superhero stuff? Well, we're going to get stuff now. <laughs> For those of you that have missed out on maybe the 10 superhero titles that we've had. Then now here's your superhero stuff. All right. So uh, this is a really great campaign. Check this out. Again, the link is in the description. All right. So uh, let's check out what you guys have to say. I don't know if anyone's going to join me tonight. I, I put the link in the, in the Alterna, the Alterna secret headquarters room. I don't know if anyone's going to join me though. It's okay. If they don't, it's just us. That's fine too. Let's see here. What do you guys, what's on your mind? Let's see. Uh, Daniel says, uh, yeah, Twitter's uh, alternative Twitter actually shared the Spanish comic store. Yeah. Uh, Radar comics in Madrid. Uh, to me, it means little to no shipping costs. They even offered to order them from Alterna and ship them to me, which is great. Yeah, we've got them. Uh, we've got them signed up now, Radar Comics, and they're going to start ordering directly from us. And uh, that'll be great. That'll be great. Another Alterna certified retailer in Europe. Uh, we already have Buzzard Comics in the UK. They do a fantastic job. They ordered a big bundle of books about maybe two weeks ago, and they've got them now. So if you're in the UK, if you're in Europe right now, you can order from Buzzard Comics. Don't you don't need to order from Alterna Access. You know, save yourself the shipping, uh, and support a a retailer who is supportive of Alterna, and would appreciate your business as well. They do a great job. So we are uh, honored to have them as an Alterna certified retailer. Uh, we're working still on getting a Canadian store, and maybe an Australian store too. But it's been uh, it's been you know pulling teeth <laughs> slowly but surely let's see uh mike says i like the guided view of comiXology for the most part uh, not a big fan of pdf comics that's cool you know everyone's got uh, to each their own i like the guided view too that's kind of cool but uh yeah yeah we've got that uh offered right now on alternaaccess.com and uh you know for those of you that want to continue to read of course the books that you've downloaded from comicsology already they're not going to go anywhere you should still be able to access them Let's see uh, adam says the uh, most money i ever got from submit was an early bundle uh, package with random books uh, back towards the beginning yeah when they were really pushing it pretty hard right yeah yeah i know there's there's a lot of weird a lot of weird things going on over there it's the comic industry though so it's a lot of weird things going on everywhere within comics, unfortunately. All right. Hey, hey, Rebirth, how's it going? Cool, cool. All righty. Let's see. Uh, Dave says, uh, is that shelf behind you bending from that weight? Yeah, don't worry about it. It looks worse than it actually is. <laughs> it's also kind of like a camera trick. The angle of the camera is a bit weird. It's making it look worse than it is. It evens out, and then it's a little bit bent there. It's okay. <laughs> it's funny because there's more weight on these guys than there is over here. This one, uh, probably going to get like a 2 by 4 or something and prop it up. You know, they just don't make things like they used to. They say it holds X amount of weight, right? And then you put the weight on there, and then it buckles everywhere ridiculous ridiculous and if it collapses i hope it does it when i'm on screen this way it makes good tv if it collapses when i'm you know not on air it's just gonna be me very frustrated and pissed <laughs> at least if it's on the screen hey you guys can all get a good laugh <laughs> all right <laughs> okay so uh, adam says when amazon took away the in-app purchase from the apple app it fell over the cliff. Yeah, I heard that a lot of people were upset about that. See, it's all these little things that they did that impact sales. All these things, you, you put your comics out there, you put your whatever, your products out there, and you give them to someone who's going to be the biggest, you know, retailer, distributor, whatever it is, right? And you think, okay, they're going to do a great job. They're going to get our stuff everywhere. And then you wait. <laughs> and you find out, no. 
you're not really going to do that. You have the opportunity, let's say. <laughs> Perhaps, maybe, kind of. But, you know, getting books on Comixology at first, we were one of the first publishers to get on there. I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought the option to have digital comics out there. I love the guided view. I love all that stuff. It was awesome. You know, getting out there to international readers too, or just even people who are always just living on their phones or their tablets or whatever. I thought that was a fantastic option for us to have. We could grow from that. And it just never, it never took off. Our digital sales are always between eight to 10%, you know, of our print sales. And it's, pretty much that way for every publisher it's so we're just we're just moving forward we're just going to do it on our own uh mr self loather says are you concerned about piracy sort of kind of but not really sort of kind of but not really our biggest concern was the fact that it added insult to injury because see piracy right someone could just do the old-fashioned way of, of scanning the books if they want they can you can fight that stuff till doomsday right but it's a little bit weirder when you're surrendering like 50 to 55% of a sale to someone. And you know that by giving them that amount, it's going to get pirated. And they're just going to shrug. <laughs> it, there's a weird feeling there. So all the creators, myself too, we were all just kind of like, uh, you know. And then on top of that, you know, if the sales were great, if the sales were fantastic, you could kind of just like shrug about piracy. You know, you, you could look the other way. But when the sales were what they were, and there's no growth involved, and there's no push by, you know, Comixology, it makes you feel like, well, why are we here? Why are we putting the books out on this site? They're just... They're just gonna languish, you know. It's it's like a it's like a weird digital version of a physical store that just wants people to steal everything that's on the shelf. And maybe sometimes they sell a book because someone just doesn't figure, you know, I, I should just steal this. That's what comicsology was like. Like if you could make that into a into a physical store, it's a store that's gonna have all your books displayed. It looks great, you know. It's like, oh, I'm in the biggest store, and like, let's say if if you know, the biggest store in the whole world has your stuff. But they also don't care if anyone steals any of it. And it catches on, right? And pretty soon everyone just starts stealing <laughs> your stuff that's at this store. And the only people, the only good people out there that still want to pay for it and still support, they get, they, it becomes fewer and fewer of those people. Eventually, you start wondering, why am I giving my product to this store when like 80% of who's reading or buying the book, buying the book, you're just stealing it. And then you start feeling bad for the people that pay for it. Because you're like, you know, they're being, they're being so great to us. And, and they're paying for these. And they're doing the right thing. But most people aren't. You know, so that's why I always talk about, and we all love it. All of us love it way more. Print comics. That's why we got the newsprint comics. That's why they're affordable. All that good stuff. The digital comics. I even with us selling them direct, I don't expect it to be a big part of our business. It's still like, even though it's more sales for us, it's still ten percent. <laughs> like I'm looking at the numbers and it's still 10% of what our overall sales are. It just seems like that's the way it is with digital for the most part. People would rather have physical comics. And of that 10% of the 10% the of our sales to digital sales, I'd say 90% of those digital sales are outside the U.S. They're international customers, which is to be expected, I would imagine. Uh, we only have a couple of people who are in the U.S. that will purchase the books digitally uh, and then sometimes they purchase they purchase the books digitally and they purchase the books physically too when they're in the u.s uh, but most of the comics that are digital they get purchased outside so yeah it's uh it's kind of funny let's see simon says i hope it's the camera lens or else it's a lot of a uh, newsprint weight yeah, that's what i'm talking about this doesn't weigh anything you know it says that these shelves hold 150 pounds 
It was probably like 80 pounds. You, see, they, they, you know, they make these things. <laughs> A guy from Red Bank says, you leave in comics, I'll just say, what? Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been talking about that for 20 minutes now, give or take. I don't want to torture these poor people some more with that. But yeah, yeah, we're leaving comics, I'll We've been leaving comics, I'll That's the thing. Whether or not you realize it, we haven't put a new book on comics, I'll since like December 2019. We haven't put a new, we haven't put a new book on there since, you know, Seven months? Almost eight months? So, I don't even think our December releases went to Comixology. I think the last physical releases we put to print to a digital on Comixology were from November. But they're all on alternaaccess.com right now. So, yeah. And also, for those wondering, too, we need one more. One more channel member. And we will upgrade the stream yard. We are at 39 members right now. 39. Once we reach 40, we'll upgrade our stream yard. We can do a lot more streaming on here. We can uh, have more guests and things like that. We can do more streams, more guests, more everything. Uh, an intro video, a, a little stream yard. Duck dude is, he'd be kaput. It'd be an Alterna logo or something. Something. Maybe the Alterna Comics live logo. Uh, that you see there. Maybe he'll move over to there. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to talk more about that too in a second. Uh, let's get to what you guys are saying. Let's see here. All right. Demented uh, for fun. Hey, how's it going? I don't think I've ever seen Alterna advertised on Comics Solid. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a big sale there. Oh, uh, boy. I don't know. I want to say 2013, 2014, something like that. And, it, and we were trying to get that going for three years, for three years, trying to get a sale, a 50% off sale. So, you know, think about that, right? For three years, we spent trying to get Comixology to give our books away for half the price. <laughs> so even though we got a little bit of a bump because of the, the sale that went on, let me tell you, it wasn't anything near worth <laughs> the three years of effort. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Steven. Oh, hey, how's it going? Thank you for supporting the channel. Appreciate that. It says, I got my sketch card in the mail. It looks great. I like the Hulk sticker on the back of the envelope. Yeah, I put like, uh, I've got all kinds of stickers. I got Ninja Turtles, I got Marvel, I got all sorts of stickers and whatnot. Um, and I put them on the back of the envelope uh, as like a little seal or whatever for the sketch cards and whatnot, just to make them fun for you guys. I appreciate that. Thank you, Steven. Uh, guy from Red Bank says, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're leaving comicsology, I imagine. Uh, so uh, you know, and and again, do what you want to do. You know, if you got to get your book on comicsology, go for it. Uh, test the waters. It's the same thing like when we had the Etsy store and we had all the other things, and you know, do whatever works for you. I'm just updating you guys on on our experience and what we were going through. I'm not uh, necessarily trying to say, oh, don't do what we did or do what we did or whatever it is. Uh, it's more just like this is how it it's going for us and. Um, you know, if you wonder, hey, where is Alternative from Comixology? Can we get them anymore? Um, you know, you can get them, but direct from us. And if you like the the guided view stuff, I get it. Don't worry about it. If you hate reading PDF digital comics, which some people have actually, the ones that get the comics from us, they love it. They like it more than the guided view. They like having that control and going in and out and zoom in and doing whatever they want to do and setting it up and doing the PDF so they can actually, you know, see the double page spread and do the two on two kind of thing. If they've got a larger tablet or a larger screen that they read them on, all kinds of things you can do with that too. Uh, you know, so they like them like that, but I do not hold it against anybody. If you're like, well, you know what? I'm not getting any of these digital books you're selling because I don't like this kind of way to read them. That's fine too. No problem at all. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's your decision. Totally. Let's see. Uh, guy from Red Bank says, the Ma uh, Mighty Mascots is part of a, balance, a complete balanced breakfast. Yes, it is. It absolutely is. Uh, Simonon uh, says, does Keith got the sponsorship from Crispy Hexagons? Uh, he should work on that. That would be fun. That would be great. Uh, AL, hey, how's it going? Says, uh, frozen pancakes ship well. Yeah, but see, Ross wants me to make them. He wants me to make them and then ship them. And I don't know if I'm going to 
free, you know, make some pancakes and then freeze them and then ship them with his order. I think they defrost. I gotta start packing things in like a refrigerated box and people are gonna think I'm, I'm smuggling organs to you guys or something. It's gonna get weird. You know, this is hey, Ross. Just you get some frozen pancakes or something from you know Dollar Tree and or whatever, and, and pretend that I made them for you. And uh, and yeah, there you go. <laughs> you have my blessing. Uh, Daniel says, uh, speaking of Amazon, what is your views of Amazon uh, stopping to carry some manga books? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I don't like that. No, no, no. Interesting. Okay. Huh. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't know the uh, the full details of that, but if it's for the reasons of why I think it's the uh, of, of all the craziness that's going on all the time lately, I don't like that. Huh. That's a. Uh, mm, I don't know. I have to look into that. I don't want to, uh, my knee jerk reaction is I don't like that, but I have to look into it and see what's what and why. Let's see here. Uh, Ross says, uh, don't blame me. I'm not the one who promised a pancake with every order. Hey, I didn't actually promise it. Uh, Brenda, Brenda had asked if I was going to send pancakes out. I was just like, yeah, okay. You know, just like that. Like, yeah, okay. And then uh, all of a sudden everyone thinks I'm sending pancakes out with their comic order. I was just, you know, I felt it was under immense pressure, immense pressure from Brenda. You know, she attacked me on social media. Said, you better send pancakes out with my order. I'm going to tweet at you. In serious tone with all caps, maybe. I said, don't do that. I'll send pancakes, whatever it is you want. Just don't, don't do the all caps. All capitals, it's nothing worse. Nothing worse than that. Don't you yell at me virtually. I'll give you your pancakes. And, uh, you know, and you must have saw that. And then you must have assumed, as, as the kind gentleman that you are, that I was going to send pancakes to everybody, including yourself. I was just saying that to get Brenda off my back, you know. She was really just really upset. She wanted those pancakes. And I didn't know what else to do. I felt like I had to. I had to agree. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Made in Hell says, um, will that get past uh, Australian customs? Uh, pancakes or cereal boxes? I don't know. Yeah, it will get past. You just mention it. You just mention you're sending cereal or, or whatever. <laughs> It'll be fine. They'll shake it. And they'll hear it. I think it's either a puzzle or a cereal. We'll, we'll list it on there, you know. You, you list as long as you list it, they go, Oh, okay. That's what's shaking around in the box. It's cereal. Obviously. This is what those crazy uh, Americans send people in Australia. Cereal. Like we don't have it. That's what they probably think. But only they would say it in an Australian accent. Not like not like the what I was saying. Uh, let's see. Uh, Daniel says, uh, I am the 22nd backer on the Indiegogo of Mighty Mascots. I was so overjoyed about how well it went. Yeah, it did great. Uh, Keith was really floored too. Uh, Keith, <laughs> he didn't know if it would even hit the $5,000 goal. I said, Keith, it's going to hit $10,000. It's going to, you got people who love you. They love the book. It's definitely at least going to hit $10,000. you are going to totally hit your goal. I said, you're going to probably hit your goal in a week to two weeks. And he did. He did. And he was so, you know, he's so nervous. It's one of his first campaigns. The first campaign he did, I think, only raised like a thousand or so. And, uh, you know, that was like, wow, to him at the time. It was a couple of years ago. I said, I said you're going to be fine. You're going to you're gonna get a lot of support. People love you. They love the book. And they're going to want to see more of it. And, you know, you do right by him. Make sure I'll, I'll help you out. You, you're going to do right by him. And then... The next time you do your your next story arc or your next campaign or whatever it is, you'll have even more support and more people who are like, hey, yeah, I love the first one. The first one was great. Keith did a great job, and I want to support him again. And uh, at this point, I've between Indiegogo and then I used Kickstarter for a long time until I think the past two or three years it's been Indiegogo exclusively. They, they've just upped their game tremendously from Kickstarter. I don't think I could go back. Um, I think I've run 
personally like 15 campaigns you know and then i've helped out like 10 others and then i've advised like i helped out like physically like with rewards and whatnot and then i advised maybe five or six so this is just like this is whatever at this point crowdfunding uh it's 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 old hat why do they say old hat is that a phrase i don't know <laughs> let's see uh yeah that was daniel ara says but i don't want to be a pirate uh, it's from seinfeld yeah 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 i mean give him the puffy shirt the puffy shirt should be like the twenty-five thousand dollars. everyone gets a puffy shirt Twenty-five thousand dollar stretch goal. That would be, that would be hilarious. Not to Keith though. I don't think he wants to. <laughs> I don't think he wants to buy everybody pirate shirts. Uh, let's see. Uh, guy from Red Bank says I'm, t I'm totally a pirate. Art. Thanks a lot, uh, Hickman and White. Uh, Logan. Hmm. 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 Uh, Christian Nomad. Hey, thanks for supporting the channel. Says I love Raisin Brand. Come on, Keith. You were my boy. That's what I'm talking about, right? I love Raisin Ben. Uh, frosted mini wheats, uh, you know, good stuff. He, he says there's not enough sugar. I was like, Keith, first of all, you know, the raisins are all in sugar. That's what the, the you know, they're all shiny and sugary. And then frosted mini wheats, they're frosted with sugar. You put your sugar on top of sugar. He wants, he wants like, you know, his sugar with a side of mini wheat. He doesn't want the, the, the sugar on top of the mini wheat. I don't know. Very weird. Let's see. Uh, Simonon7 says, Alterna-sponsored uh, Corsair, Terror of the Spanish uh, Main. That was Tara. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Corsair, like uh, Cyclops' dad. Uh, Roy Falker says, uh, you put the link in the secret Alterna Whisper Network? Yeah, I did. And, and no one's coming in here. You know, our whisper network sucks. <laughs> the alternative whisper network's awful. It's not like the comic industry whisper network. That's a really effective whisper network. Uh, hats on to them. H hats on, hats off, and hats on. And then back off again uh, to them for their uh, amazing, uh, horrible whisper network. <laughs> it's way more effective than the one that we have at Alterna, where I send a link and everyone's like, eh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't want to be on, I don't want to be on this screen with him that's what they're thinking no i love those guys <laughs> great <laughs> uh but yeah, yeah i put it in the uh the alterna alterna room there let's see uh al says i'm the first backer for my were you wow thank you you know first backer on the campaign i'm thinking when i run a campaign um i'm thinking of giving like some kind of a secret special prize thing for the first backer because that's kind of cool. It's a cool distinction. Let's see. Uh, Mateo says, my comicsology has a BLM uh, blasted all over it. Ooh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> does it? I don't think mine does. That's weird. Hmm. Interesting. Well, whatever. <laughs> uh, let's see. Daniel says, alternate shelf coming soon. Uh, it's like the uh, Ikea uh, mafia of uh, shelves. Uh, hey, Dorigo Duke, how's it going? What's up, man? Let's see. Uh, Fat Freddy's Cats is coming soon. Uh, Pete crushed. Big sale on slightly damaged books. I'd have to have a big sale on all the slightly damaged books if I'm crushed, right? I got to pay for those bills somehow. Uh, mind the comics. Uh, it says, just learned the manga uh, Demon Slayer. 20 volumes so far has sold 75 million copies in Japan, 45 million in 20, 20's first semester. I am not surprised at all. Those books, uh, the manga books, make the entire comic industry look like a joke. The sales are phenomenal on them. Absolutely. I think something like One Piece, it was like, what is that, like 200 million copies or something? It's insane. Uh, hey there, Dave. How's it going? Good, man. How are you doing? Good, good. Looks like you were one of the only alternative people to be brave enough to prepare <laughs> these waters tonight. Okay. <laughs> well, look, I got my alternative shirt on. So oh, there you go. I'm all in. <laughs> Repping. All in for alternative. I love it. 
How are you doing tonight? Good, man. Good. I just turned in uh, the back uh, half of the script for Tinseltown 3 to Henry. And so we're about halfway done with that. Awesome. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. People are loving the first one. So uh, I know they're they're itching for that second issue, which uh, I'm itching to get that uh, going at the printer as well. It's been it's been a nightmare. They've been completely hammered in, in so many different ways. Yeah. Because of everything. And uh, it's been tough. Even just getting email responses from them has been really tough. I'm still waiting like two weeks now. I've sent them three emails. I'm trying to poke and prod. I'm going to have to call them up on Monday and be like, uh, is everything okay? You guys still there? <laughs> yeah, that's never a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I know they're really busy, but at the same time, I know they're also cutting staff because of all the craziness going on. But yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we can get that up and running and uh, and get these books out to everybody because I know everyone is, uh, you know, everyone's being great and patient, but they're all obviously uh, waiting with bated breath. Let's see. So, what do you think about us uh, stepping away from comicsology and and selling digital directly through Alterna? Um, that's cool with me. You know, I I um I'm all about getting the books out there down as many pipelines will, as we'll have us you know yeah it's great i'm seeing way more sales digitally okay. direct than from comiXology comiXology i mean you saw like the reports it'd be like 15 20 yeah. you know and you're like what is this this is comiXology it's supposed to be the biggest digital retailer of comics on the planet and it just these look like numbers that you know over th over the course of three months 20 copies or something sold that's ridiculous uh, but now uh, I'm seeing I'm seeing traction on digital sales. I mean, it's still nothing close to the print level, but it's more direct okay. to us. And then we get to keep. Uh, we don't have to do the whole 50-50 split with them and then split it later on. So it's a win-win. Right. And, um, and the readers are loving it, too. So it's a win-win-win, which I'm happy to do it. And, and I'd rather do it this way. We get more control over it. We get more uh, cut from it. And we actually have that kind of uh, ability to promote it more effectively. Whereas Comixology, if I didn't just push people to it all the time, we would have barely no sales. Yeah. And for one quarter, I, I played like devil's advocate with it and figured, okay, I'm not going to mention Comixology books at all from Alterna. And I noticed that it would be almost nothing okay. compared to if we promoted it. But it, on that level, I mean, you might as well just do what, exactly what we're doing. If you're going to start just pushing people directly to, to a link and that's the only way they're really going to buy it, you might as well sell it direct and keep the money. It's very strange. This whole industry is very strange. <laughs> it feels like, you know, for the privilege of giving away a lot of money to people, <laughs> we direct sales to them. <laughs> right, right. It's like, okay, you know, are you guys going to direct sales to, to, to get people going for us too? And they're like, no, no, we just list it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Youper says, uh, I'm trying to get through One Punch Man right now. Uh, Alterna needs some manga. Uh, we, we need whatever uh, comes our way. <laughs> I'm not against putting out manga. I, I think, I don't think for us it would be smart to go the the true manga route like the size of it the way to read it i think that would confuse a lot of people but i'm not you know turning away anyone with maybe a, a manga style of art or storytelling uh, i don't really get any submissions like that yeah but um you know it'd be interesting i love manga art oh yeah lone wolf and cub i'm a big fan yeah yeah oh old school manga is even better boy oh boy I love that. Yeah. Let's see, uh, gingered it says, uh, gingered or ginger red. I'm going to just say gingered. Uh, most piracy isn't readers anyway, just digital archivists holding in case it were to be lost otherwise. Yeah. You know, the way I look at a lot of digital piracy is that for the most part, um, and people get really upset when they see the numbers and things like that. Like they'll see like, Oh my God, we could have had 10,000 readers on this book. Uh, these are people who weren't really going to buy the book anyway. You know, uh, so now they go to the piracy site, they see it. It's like, it doesn't really still put a good feeling in you when you see that. I definitely understand that. But at the same time, don't think, oh, we lost 10,000 sales. That's, that's, right. that's a false equivalency. And a lot of people go that route with it. And, um, you know, if they're going to pirate 99 cent Alterna titles, uh, 
<laughs> that you could buy, you know, print a dollar fifty, a dollar ninety nine. Um, they, they'll pirate anything. <laughs> it, I, I've seen. This is the craziest part. We've offered free books before on Comicsology. I've seen the free books pirated to, <laughs> to pirated sites. <laughs> so it's just if it's there, they're going to be like, oh, I was pirated. Let me put it up in here. <laughs> uh, this is crazy. So uh, let's see here. A couple more people in the chat. Uh, Ara says, ah, 2019, the good old days. Yeah. Well, I don't know about 2019 being the good old days. Maybe I would go back to like 2009, 2010, and then maybe a little before that. <laughs> 2019 was still like, oh, that, that year kind of stinks too. It's nothing like 2020. 2020 is just, uh, this doesn't register as reality to me. <laughs> Yeah, this is, uh, this is a separate level. <laughs> there are some moments where it just like hits you and you go, oh, my God, like this doesn't seem like it could really all be like the shit yeah. all hitting the fan at once. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like, all right, so when does the comet come around and we're supposed to drink the Kool-Aid so we can all hop on board? <laughs> because this is the way this whole year seems to be going is that it doesn't make much of any kind of sense whatsoever. And, uh, you know, we might as well just accept that. It's 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 uh it's very weird. Uh, Broad Nation says uh, I'd like to thank you. I'm writing my comic right now, and once it's done, I hope to use your printing partnership program to get my book made. Uh, thanks for giving new creators an opportunity to print. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. Yeah, it's always great to to get that kind of stuff going, and and especially with the printing partnership program, that's always a good thing, especially for you guys. And uh, printing is you know it's it's not necessarily uh, as inexpensive as it used to be, so. If you can partner up with us to get your book out there and it costs you less money as well to do so and you get a nice professional looking book uh, you know why not uh, christian nomad thank you for supporting the channel says i love the look and feel of alterna comics i agree yeah you know i'm pushing digital tonight just to let you guys know but uh 100 my heart's in print uh digital comics i, I look at them to, to evaluate submissions and then that's kind of it i don't really download digital I don't really read digital comics. Um, it's always more, you know, I want to see the print. I want to get the book. I want to hold it in my hands. I want to flip the page. I want to be able to, you know, just see. It's just a very different experience. At least, you know, that's how I feel. Is it, do you feel that way at all, Dave? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I definitely subscribed to Comicsology when it first came out and, you know, tried to buy a bunch of books digitally and the novelty of doing that wore off fairly quickly. And, you know, I, I, I do like holding a book in my hand and turning the pages for sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it. Uh, Daniel says, I'm a digital first kind of guy. Comics are different for me. I bought a uh, red Koi number two digitally alternative website. It didn't feel the same. Yeah. It just, it doesn't, even if you're a digital first guy where you like digital comics, there is still a difference, you know? And, um, and I find most people when they're told, well, if you had to pay the same amount of money, uh, which would you rather have? You know, if it, nothing else was in the equation, shipping and all that stuff, and they pick print, you know, yeah. and if space, because a lot of times like space is an issue for people. So they go, well, that's why I like digital. But, you know, if I could, I would add infinite space. I'd love to have a print copy and, and that be it. Um, so there's all kinds of reasons, but there are all these these things that amount to this is kind of an excuse as to why I prefer digital right now over print. But in the end, if you removed all the excuses, they would prefer print over digital at least yeah. that's 99 percent of the people i've talked to anyway yeah i think people do get to a certain age where they simply run out of room you know they only have so much room for so many long boxes in the garage yeah. and you know otherwise, get, otherwise get they get otherwise they get shelves that do this you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> and this is you know it's it's kind of it's it's all your fault you people that support alternate it's all your fault because these are all pending orders and stuff too these are all things i'm waiting on um, that I've got tons of boxes on top of the boxes, you know. It's, it's because you guys order Alterna books. You should, you should stop ordering Alterna. <laughs> Someone's gonna clip that and be like, "Hey, look, Simetti's finally turning on the fans," <laughs> just like a real comics pro. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is. I'm gonna get something for this because, like I said, this is maybe 80 pounds of weight. And it's supposed to hold 150, and it's still doing that. It's not as bad as it looks on the screen. It's much worse looking. The, 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 it's the, the depth of field on the lens makes it all kind of have that little bit of, like, it starts to flare out at the sides. 
because you see even over here it starts to do a little bit of a curvature and yeah. there's no curvature like that the way i'm looking at it right now um but yeah it's 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 really funny i, I love that david's like is that is that what's wrong with that shelf <laughs> um, and then i see on the screen what he's talking about and i'm like that's way worse looking there than it looks here <laughs> Let's see, uh, Ash and Jackal says, "Hey Peter, I hate auto pay, or I'd help you out. Oh, with the membership, don't even don't worry about it. That's just you know, that's something for you guys. Uh, you know, we're one member away from uh, upgrading the channel. Once we get to forty, I want to upgrade. Uh, at the uh, sticker, uh, we have a new tier. It's not new, but it's revised. Mm. It's the sticker All Star tier, which is now the sticker pin and trading card tier." And every month, people are going to get a new sticker or a new pin or a new trading card. And that's at the $4.99 level. If you come in and you support the channel at the $9.99 level, you get a sketch card. And then you also get, still, a new sticker, trading card, or pin every month mailed out to you. Uh, this is just because of the fact that if you're, if you're going to support the channel, you're going to pay either $4.99 or $9.99 every month or whatever it is. Um, I want people to get something for that, not just the discount to alternate access or the, the use of emojis for five dollars a month or whatever i want you guys to actually have something to show for it let's see here uh, a couple more people here in the chat thank you guys so much for uh, watching and joining us and i want to make sure i get to uh to everybody here before i move on um mm -hmm -hmm. ross says uh ross says stop blaming me for promises you made uh, uh pete wants me to pirate homemade pancakes <laughs> I don't know if you caught any of that pancake conversation that I was having with uh, with Ross and a couple people in the chat. I had said something about uh, one of the Alterna fans had wanted, I made pancakes and they wanted pancakes with their order too. And they were being uh, semi-serious. And so I said, yeah, okay, sure. You know, we'll, we'll put pancakes with your order. And she was expecting pancakes. But then Ross here, he sees that and he's like, oh, I'm expecting pancakes now. Well, everything and, goes better with some pancakes. Yeah, and I don't blame him. Yeah, you know who doesn't want pancakes arriving with their comic books? But the reality of the situation is, I didn't make pancakes and I didn't send the pancakes to Ross with his order, so he feels slighted now. You know, I yeah. made pancakes at home and I ate them at home, and they were great and we enjoyed them, but they weren't for Alterna customers. Right. We deal exclusively in off-brand breakfast cereal. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, uh, David says, I totally enjoy your sketch streams. I have a character we have designed for an upcoming film series. If I sent you a photo of this hero, could I order a uh, Publish and Pete sketch card? for? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, go to uh, petersometti.etsy.com and you'll be able to see, or you can even sign up if you're, uh, you're not a channel member, it looks like. Yeah, so you can sign up for the sketch card uh, tier and you can order the sketch card like that. And you could actually become a channel member too. And, uh, you know, it's up to you. There's many different ways to support if you'd like. Let's see. Uh, Daniel Fer uh, Ferreras is a uh, Peter Smetti, uh, the Pancake Saga. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to be like Pancake Pete one morning on a Sunday or something and make pancakes live or whatever. You know, what? I'm not even going to say that and promise that because I can't do that. I don't have a setup for that. And <laughs> Ross is going to hold me to that. And I'm not going to be able to follow through. So uh, sorry, Ross, not happening. Uh, Randy says Amazon stopped selling no game, no life. That's weird. Huh? I wonder if, uh, if they stopped or I wonder if the publisher took it down. I don't know how, uh, how that's going. Let's see. Terror says, uh, Amazon may be too big for its britches. Now they had the ability to beat competitors on price, but now the competition is out of business except expect selection and price to change. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. There's a lot of things changing. That's for sure. A lot of things changing everywhere. Uh, Made in Hell says, uh, just be sure to wear the eye patch. Uh, yeah, the uh, that great stretch goal for Mighty Mascots. See, uh, Dale says, I like buckwheat pancakes. Uh, I'll pay extra. Oh, interesting. Interesting. You guys are giving me pancake ideas, but I, I don't have the setup for that. I can't do that. I can't be a publisher and a pancake chef at the same time, everybody. <laughs> People, they're like, you don't need to sleep. Make pancakes and, and make comics and Need sleep. Yeah. <laughs> now, maybe uh, if you had a hot plate. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. You know, don't give them ideas, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Simon7 says, that would be uh, log 
Wombat. I wonder uh, what you're referencing there. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, Lord Tricosta, thank you for supporting the channel. It says uh, number 150 Breakfast Club uh, backer. Oh, you're the number 150 of that. Yeah, because they were looking for 150 backers on there. And then that would unlock that serial uh, bonus uh, stretch goal. Cool. And you helped push them over on the 15th. That's awesome. Let's see. Steven says, can I have two memberships to put you over the top? No, it's got to be per person. But but God bless you, Steven. God bless you. See, he's going all out. Definitely. Yeah, I'll drink. I'll drink to that, too. I got my uh, my extra large coffee at 10 o'clock. No, 11 o'clock at night. Uh oh! Somebody wants me to do the pancakes now. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, the tables have turned. <laughs> <laughs> They're like Dave makes the pancakes. Ah, there we go. Let's see, uh, Ross says I'm a simple man, perhaps a bit naive too. I see the promise of free pancakes. I go for the free pancakes. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Let's see here. Uh, <laughs> RS says I'll come on next time. I'll have to do another. Uh, I'll have to do another show at some point where I, I put the link in the chat. I think the time that I got uh, mooned, where three people came in and mooned the chat and myself. <laughs> um, I think it's because they knew, they knew it was coming. They saw it somewhere, and then they were like planning and waiting, you know. And they were all set up. You need a screener. Yeah, and uh, at this point. I think when I do the link and I, I throw it out there and I have the invite for everybody, what, when I do it, when I'm already in the middle of a show and someone can't just plan that kind of thing, you know, it, it works out better. So I don't think I'll give anybody notice so they can prepare their whole setup to scar us all for life. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Perry's Hotter says, uh, dang, my book just went up for sale on Comixology, and then I hop on YouTube and see this. Well, you do what you got to do. You know, uh, we're at a, a point right now. I was on Comixology with uh, all these alternative books since Comixology started. We were one of the first publishers. We got approached at um, SPX in Bethesda, Maryland, and uh, that was like 2008. And we got approached by uh, one of their kind of uh, sales outreach people at the time. It was a very small company at the time, too. And um, we hopped on board. I figured, oh, that sounds pretty cool. You know, it was interesting. We At the time, we were on drive through Comics. Uh, do you remember Wowio? No. W-O-W, like wow, and then I-O. And uh, Wowio was kind of really cool because they did all these digital comics that were essentially free to read, but they were advertiser-sponsored. Mm, okay. And we made we made a, a lot of money from them. It was They were probably the best platform at the time until they burned through all their advertiser cash really fast because mm. they were paying paying out way too much for these comics and you know per page being read and, and all this kind of stuff i think it was something like they paid like five cents per page that was read and we would have like 10 to fifteen thousand page views like a month wow so at that time especially very early on it was like 2009 or something like that or whatever that was um being on there, being on Comixology, being on Drive Through Comics, and a couple others too, um, they were by far the best one. But then they went to the wayside. Comixology eventually got bought out by Amazon. They kind of grew from that, and it was kind of good for that first year. And then it got really weird, and they got very complacent, mm. and they became very difficult and very bureaucratic in their approach to get a lot of things done. They wanted to start pushing, it seemed anyway, they wanted to start pushing bigger publishers a lot more, and then they wanted to push comiXology submit even more than that okay and for smaller guys like us we were like direct competition with comiXology submit so they kind of didn't really want to push our books it took three years to get a sale it was frustrating and the, the whole experience just amounted to the fact that that's why we're leaving now but if you're just starting you just got a book on there you're just doing whatever get get all your stuff everywhere get it out there see what works for you maybe your experience at comiXology is different than what we've had you know, I don't want to deter anybody at the same time because everyone's experience is always going to be different. So I'm just letting you guys know why we're at where we're at, why we're doing what we're doing. And if you're wondering and you go to Comixology and say, well, where's Alterna? I don't, I don't see him on here. Well, now you know why and you know where to get our books digitally if you want. And that's about it. So, yeah. Let's see. Uh, comic Book Bob says, hola, Pete, keeping the faith, bro. 
Hey, Bob, how's it going? Yeah, Bob's always good. He's always a, a, a cool, cool dude with the Alterna hats and whatnot. He's got every Alterna hat, too. It's always great seeing him represent. See, uh, Aris says, love Tinseltown. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I love uh, working on it, giving it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel says, what's up, uh, Mr. Lucarelli? Hey, Daniel. Let's see. Uh, Von Dufus says, well, David, I cannot get the tune uh, Hollywood. out of Yeah. That. You know, that's, that's funny. That, that song has kind of a comic book connection, too, because um, that's actually a cover. Uh, it was done by a band called the Kids of Whitney High, um, which is uh, a group, a uh, musical group from Whitney High High School, and they're all um, handicapped uh, kids, right? Um, they put together a band, and uh, White Mike Wellman, who used to be with the Comic Bug, he's now with Atomic Basement, he helped them put out a comic book called The Kids of Whitney High. Um, and we had a mutual friend named Tony, who was a big Kiss fan and whatnot, and I ended up meeting Mike at um, a celebration for, for Tony's life because he he passed away. But that's how I found out about the kids of Whitney High. And I uh, I always liked that song. So I did kind of a rearrangement of it. I kind of, you can find the original version on, uh, you know, Spotify and, and um, <clears throat> Apple Music and stuff. But uh, Dame Fortune's version is a little bit more like me channeling uh, David Bowie or Sweet or something like that. So I, I appreciate the fact that you appreciate the tune. I just got like uh, mixed back from a new song I'm working on today. I can't wait to share with everybody. So I got a few mixed notes and then I'm going to do a lyric video for it. And it's going to be real cool. Oh, awesome. Very cool. Men of many talents. I got to keep myself off the street. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tough out there. Yeah. Yeah. Comics, man. You can't just depend on them. <laughs> you got to do all kinds of things. Let's see. Uh, Dorigo Duke says, uh, oh, I need an Alterna shirt to wear at work as a way of uh, prodding the boss to start stocking Alterna comics. Yeah. Uh, you can get uh, the one that Dave has is sold out. I think that was like three or four shirt designs ago. But we, we have Alterna shirts on the site, though. Go to the merch section and uh, we got them there. Or even a hat if you're if you're okay with uh, if your boss there is okay with having you wear a hat too, you can pick up a hat. Let's see, uh, Billy says, "What's up, Pete and David?" Hey, Billy, how's it going? Uh, Simon on seven says, "Tinseltown's next issue when? No pressure, but I need it." <laughs> well, go. you have it, Pete. When's it coming out? <laughs> oh man, it's coming out as soon as the printer is okay with me sending them files to to get books printed. It's been madness. I'm hoping it's coming out sometime in August at this point now. Mm. Uh, it's been madness, man. Absolutely. Let's see. Uh, everybody's saying hi to each other. That's good. You guys are all so, so great. It's, it's, it's awesome seeing everybody getting along in this room and, and saying, hey. Uh, Upris says, I was pleasantly surprised with the new Tinseltown number one, my first Tinseltown book. Oh, happy to have you on board, Upris. Glad you liked it. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of which... Uh, Tinseltown number one is one of the books that's now back in stock. We have a little bit of them. We got a couple of retailer buyback, or I should say we didn't get a couple of retailer buybacks. Uh, I pulled a lot of teeth to get retailer buybacks in. Mm. <laughs> did some uh, did some trading to try to get books in that we were out of stock of. So we've got Red Koi number two, a couple of those issues, a couple of Gods and Gears number one, Blood Realm number one, Tinseltown number one, a couple others too on the site on alternaaccess.com. I'm not, quantity is very limited, so I'm not sure even if we have them still there. Uh, we had a couple, actually, we had a whole bunch of sales today. Uh, Friday's usually our biggest day, I think, because of the free comic Friday and, and just Friday in general, uh, being the day it is. But uh, they might still be available on the site, so check it out. Check out alternaaccess.com if you're missing any of those kinds of uh, key crucial issues. Um, they are back in stock for just a little while. Uh, but yeah, we got those issues back in stock today. And, uh, you know, it, it's great to see that kind of stuff come in whenever whenever I'm able to anyway. You know, issues like Tinseltown number one and and Gods and Gears number one that kind of sold out quicker than we all thought it would have. And it's good to get five copies or so in here and there and, and have them available again. And, and even when they fly out really fast, it's 
at least people can get them because otherwise they start going for crazy prices uh, on eBay. And uh, I think for it came out in a Wednesday number two, which is a title that we can't reprint due to rights issues at this point. Mm. Um, someone bought, I think they told me they bought an issue for like 40 bucks because mm. it's become crazy rare at this point. It was like a three, three or 4,000 print run, something like that. Uh, never reprinted, will never reprint it. It's kind of become like a, uh, I guess, a, a, a weird sort of um, holy grail of, of alterna collecting at this point. But yeah, I was like, $40. Uh, that was crazy. <laughs> so if you've got an It Came Out on a Wednesday, number two, or if you know a retailer that has an It Came Out on a Wednesday, number two, make sure to go and get that book. And then you too can possibly make $40 on an alternate title. <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy that uh, that the issue is up there for that. And I've seen, sometimes I've seen these issues on there for even more. Uh, especially people in the beginning, uh, the first wave of alternate, the first year, I saw uh, people getting them graded and things like that. Oh, yeah. And uh, the graded copies, they'd be up there for like a hundred something bucks or whatever. And, and some of them sold, which is, I mean... Man, oh man, it's just it's just surreal to see that. You know, it's it's we're just kind of here making our our comic stories. <laughs> you don't think much about collectability, you know. <laughs> right, right. Let's see. Uh, Dorigo says, uh, I'm old school, I guess zero interest in digital comics. Uh, just got a mail call with a big beautiful box of newsprint alterna, though. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. You know, we have the option there for people. But I'm just like you. I, I kind of got no interest in it either. I think it's cool. I like having the option out there, but print for me all the way. Especially alternate print. You know, nothing's like, especially when the books age. Uh, the 2017 books at this point, whenever I get them back or, from a retailer or, you know, and every now and then I'll, I'll look through the collection I've got and they smell already like old comics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. They really do smell like that, though, when they come from the retailer. And I think it's because they're usually on the shelf or wherever, and they're kind of absorbing the, the world around them. Right, right. And, you know, they, they, that smell just ferments. <laughs> it's uh, There's no smell like it other than, uh, you know, it's like that old book smell, you know. That yeah, old paperbacks. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. There's nothing like it. Let's see, you know, my wife, she loves that smell too. She's just like the first thing she does with an old book is she just reads it, just you know, reads it with her nose. <laughs> she puts it right up, big sniff, and she's like, Ah, smells like grandma's basement. You know, and it's <laughs> like that's what it is. Can't do that with a tablet. If you if your tablet or whatever starts smelling like a grandma's basement, something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something's very wrong. Get out of the house. You have a <laughs> A very strong likelihood of black mold infestation if your tablet is smelling like the basement. Let's see, uh, Dorigo says, What kind of submissions do you get too many of? What genre or style would you like to get more of? Um, I think lately, let's see, the last batch of submissions, I got a lot of, uh, of derivative superhero stories. And my, by derivative, I mean it's it's basically Batman, it's basically Superman, it's it's basically Spider Man, um, you know, just like with a slight tweak here or there. Uh, I want to see the, the the worst thing that I see, and I get this a lot. It, it, it's not necessarily a submission; it's it's more the question, and I and I get people that go, uh, "Well, what what would you like for me to submit to Alterna? What kind of story do you want me to make?" and I want you to make the story you want to tell. That's the story I want you to make. Now, whether or not that's the story that we end up signing, that shouldn't even be a concern to you because Alterna is not the only publisher around and we're definitely not the only way to get your book out there and your story to get it out there into the hands of people. So even if I still don't think it's a good fit at Alterna or I don't feel confident in how I could sell it or any multitude of reasons, it doesn't matter. Make the story you want to make and make it how you want to make it as good as you can make it. Don't worry so much about, well, I want to make sure that I get in with this specific publisher. So I want to put out what they want me to put out. You know, that's 
if a publisher comes along and they want a specific kind of book, especially when it's a creator-owned publisher, totally be wary of a creator-owned publisher that wants to actually tell you what book and what story you should be making. You know, when you're in there and, they, and, and you work and you help each other out and you bounce ideas off of each other or you're like, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Or, you know, uh, even with, with both of us, like me and Dave, we've had conversations with, we've changed the, the title of Tinseltown. It was Abigail Moore. You know, or Abigail little, O'Leary. Yeah, Abigail O'Leary. Yeah, and then it got changed to Abigail Moore, and so it's all these little things here and there that you bounce each uh, off, you know, ideas uh, and you, you work together and this and that. But when you're crafting your your story, you know, it's not like Dave sent in the the book and I said, well, what do you think about you know making a story instead about like dragons in medieval times? Right. What what, what do that instead? <laughs> That's kind of odd. <laughs> it's kind of like, well, Pete, why don't you just make that story? Why are you telling me to make that story? <laughs> and they're not going to pay me either to make the story. That's very weird too. You know? So if it's a creator owned publisher in particular, you want to make sure they're, they're letting, they're, they're interested in your story for what it is. And they want to help out. Not that they want to take over or they want to tell you what to do or anything like that. But, that they work with you and they, they're they're there to help so when it comes to maybe a, a person that let's say uh, or a publisher i should say that's like a, a licensed comics publisher or a, a marvel or a dc or whatever where they've got a, a characters a universe and there's all these things and they're trying to fit in uh, the right pegs and the right holes for these books well it gets a little different at that point because you've got editorial well you should have it i mean in a perfect world where major comic publishers have editorial that cares about continuity and standards. <laughs> this is how it would go. They would pair you up with the thing you can write really well. So like Dave, I would put Dave on like a, you know, Batman or something like that. Cause he does really good crime drama mystery kind of book. He'd be great. At I could that write kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. But I'd be the wrong guy to do X-Men. It's not but my yeah, but he'd be the wrong guy to do X Men. Yeah, because Dave is really good with these, you know, one or two main characters. They bounce off each other. They're great, and they're, there's some kind of mystery, some kind of thing, you know, that that needs solving. There's action. There's drama. There's intrigue. Like Dave's pretty good at that. You know, if it's large, epic scale kind of sci-fi story, you know, maybe you get somebody else to do that instead. So it's all about pairing out the right creator for the right job, the right book, the right character. Uh, but creator owned i want to see you telling the story you want to tell i want to see that submission it's not about what i want to see it's about what you want to tell and then at that point i decide whether or not i think i can sell this book or it's good enough or it needs a tweak here and there it needs a revision or maybe it's a complete wrong fit and that's fine maybe you'll find a publisher that's the right fit or maybe you won't and you'll just put it out on your own and you'll do crowdfunding or you'll just print the book or whatever um, there's a hundred ways you can get your story out there, but don't, don't do this thing where it turns into, you're just trying to chase a trend or you're just trying to make what the publisher wants you to make. Um, as a creative person, that's, you're going to drive yourself nuts, you yeah. know? Cause then also, right. Let's say, let's say I tell Dave, you know, make that dragon story. Don't do, don't do tinsel town. That's, that's dumb. No one's going to like that. Do dragons with uh, medieval stuff and then put like a detective in there too. So let's just mix it all up and make it crazy. Because, you know, you like detective stuff. Uh, put a detective in there. They're figuring out a medieval crime and the dragons are involved. And then Dave's like, all right, I, I guess I'll do that. So Dave works hard. He does this great story. And then it gets out there. And then the audience doesn't like it. The audience hates it. Then now Dave turns around and looks at me and goes, Pete, what the hell did you have me do all of that for? <laughs> The book didn't sell. No one likes it. You told me to do this. You said they would like dragons and detective story and all this other stuff mixed together. And no one likes it. They all hate it. Right. And, and now you're like, what, what the heck do I do? You know, you have this thing that's completely, it's a flop. And now it's out there. Now you're known as the dragon detective story guy. <laughs> you're known for, some, for doing something you didn't want to do to begin with. <laughs> And now you run around telling everyone how awful it was to work with me because I forced you to make this dumb story you didn't want to do to begin with. So, so everyone loses out in the end with that scenario. 
Instead, it's better to say, okay, Dave, this is the story you got. This is the story you want to tell. All right, I like it. I think this is really uh, good. I think there's great quality here. You're, you're doing something right. You've got interesting characters. Maybe we could tweak some things, but that's about it. You know, and and listen to my ideas. And he's like, okay, I like that. I don't like that. We could do this. So let's not do that. And then that's it. And you work together and you get the best book you can get out there. And so Dave has a lot of his heart and soul still into the book. The time he's put into it, he's like, you know, I believe in this book. It means a lot to me. And I put that book out there and we sell the book and people like yourselves, you enjoy the book. But that other scenario, there's a whole lot of bad that can happen from that. So I don't like steering people down that road of saying, well, this is the thing I want you to make. Make the thing you want to make. Right. Well, it's kind of like that movie Misery, right? You know, if you're if you're writing stuff that's not true to who you are, too, then the sort of people that are going to like the book might not be the kind of people that, you know, you want to rescue you if you ever are in a car crash. Yeah, they, <laughs> they might, you know, uh, take a giant sledgehammer to your feet. Or if you're reading the book, they might just chop them off. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not going anywhere. You, you, you cock a duty, uh, whatever she says. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, that movie's so scary. <laughs> you know, and, and then you'll have to uh, beat someone uh, to death with a typewriter. And nobody See, wants that. It, yeah, this is a very bad road to go down. See, <laughs> don't write the story that a publisher uh, wants you to write. Write the story you want to write. Otherwise, you might end up beating someone to death with a typewriter. This is this these were cautionary tales. You have to take them seriously. They're there for a reason. <laughs> it's like dystopian literature, like what I said. They're not guidebooks, they're not roadmaps, they're cautionary right. tales. <laughs> yes, this is the future we want to avoid, not <laughs> <Yes>. emulate. <laughs> uh Simonon says uh David Lucarelli is spinning a great story in Tinseltown. Yeah, I agree. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let's see. Uh, Billy says, will Alterna do any more big anthologies like uh, Monstrosity or If? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I'm still uh, I'm still on the fence about that because everybody's really loving It Came Out on a Wednesday, and it seems like the, the, the correct answer is to just continue putting out It Came Out on a Wednesday type stories instead of putting out a bigger anthology. Even if I, I kind of round the corner there and, and decide to put out a giant of it came out on a Wednesday every now and then like an annual or something, mm. um, you know, something like that. But it, putting out the bigger graphic novel size or whatever it is of the anthologies just doesn't really, doesn't really jive with what I want to do anymore. And I think that the readers, they get more out of it too. When it's this single issue type format, it, it's more exciting than like once a, a year or, or every other year or whatever. Let's see. Uh, Von Dufus says, I worked on my 81-year-old father-in-law's roof today, so I'm worn out. Uh, I'm staying busy to get through 2020. Well, all the best to you. It's, uh, it's craziness. Uh, AL says, we're stuck in a South Park episode right now. Yeah. It feels, <laughs> it feels like, like it, it sometimes. Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's see. Uh, Daniel says, uh, I'm talking to Aro. Okay, cool. Let's see. Uh, Joe Boo's Rum. Hey, how's it going? Says, good evening, Pete and the chat. Good evening. Uh, Sci-fi for me says, evening, gents. Evening to you as well. Oh, good stuff. Let's see. Joe Boo says, uh, floppies all day long. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Let's see, Von Dufus is same with me, Daniel. Altern is a good mental health break. Healthy escapism. Yeah, that's what I love about the books that we've got here. Uh, I strive to put out escapist entertainment it, it could have a message all entertainment that all good stories have a message at some point but if it's a really great story that's not the whole purpose of the story it's to just hammer you with a message on every page being like you get the message you get it it's, it's like someone that tells a joke and never, after every single time they go you get the joke right you get the joke right <laughs> and after a while you're like this is the most obnoxious joke teller named peter Simetti that i ever heard of in my life <laughs> You know, so you want to make sure that the message is, is subtle and it's it's just breadcrumbs throughout, you know, not that you're hammering at home. Um, that's when it becomes just, oh, this is just a chore to read. Uh, but I love the fact that Alterna, we have this great entertainment kind of mindset where it's all about taking you out of your world, putting you into the world of the story. Um, and even if the story is serious or intense or realistic, it's still 
taking you out of your world, putting you into the world of the story, into the mindset of the characters. And everyone, uh, Dave especially in included with that, is very talented, I think, with telling those kinds of stories in that way, a very immersive storytelling. Let's see, we got a couple of people. Uh, Mr. Self Loather says, what file format are the alternate digital comics? Uh, they're uh, PDFs, PDFs. So uh, you'll be able to kind of zoom in and out, do whatever you want to do. Uh, they're not guided view or anything like that. But, um, you know, a lot of people have been appreciating them and, uh, and really enjoying them. Let's see. Uh, Dave says, uh, LOL, love you, Pete. Yeah, I was a uh, ribbon on Dave with him ribbon on me. Yeah. The whole, I know that it's out of love and concern. I appreciate that. It does look way worse, though, on the camera. I can't get over that. <laughs> it's kind of horrifying on the camera, actually. <laughs> like, it looks like this thing just going to just right down the middle. Let's see. Uh, Daniel says, someone is always uh, waiting to pull things out of context. What a great year to be alive. <laughs> Yeah, every day is a new adventure. <laughs> uh, you know, you get your choice of tragedy or comedy every day. It's uh, it's uh, amazing. And, and and throughout the whole thing, we have this uh, fantastic story arc of a pandemic. It's just like, you know, the, the worst fiction that you would never want to uh, be actually living in. Uh, we right. get to live through that. <laughs> yeah. I uh, think uh, I think it was Paul Stanley that said, yeah, we're all living in a movie now that nobody knows the end to <clears throat> yeah very very true very true let's see and i hope everybody's doing okay uh, i say all this in jest to try to put a smile on your face but yeah i'm aware it's uh, we're all just kind of there right and you could either laugh or cry at this point so let's let's try to laugh our way through it uh daniel says someone is always waiting to pull things out of oh yeah you already read that Ara says, cool beans. And then uh, Joe Boozrum says, sweet. I don't know what those are to, but yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Let's see. Uh, a couple more people. Uh, Ara says, are all pancake uh, joke punchlines flat? Flat as a pancake, Ara. You know it. Let's see. Um, Uper says, I don't want pancakes with my comic orders. I see Uper is, is, a, is a good person. Yeah. I'd be worried about the syrup getting stuck on the pages. That's the only problem. Yeah, it's just it's it's a messy scenario here. It's awful. Uh, Ross says, "I love that I come back and we're still talking pancakes." <laughs> 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 All right, let's see. Okay, so uh, the next thing we've got here. Oh, hey, soups, uh, be fanatic. Oh, fantastic. How's it going, soups? Be fantastic. There. If I in the world where I can read, I read that fine. Or well, or good. I don't know. Uh, I'm still learning how to read. Is, is, does that concern you, Dave? No. I'm, it's all good to me, Pete. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, I just I, I just look at it and I'm like, pictures. They they look good to me. The pictures look fine. <laughs> and then the I let the readers decide. I'm like, you guys read it for me. The pictures look fine to me. Uh, I can't read these words. These are just. You know, I don't know what the, these white things are with the, the black text. For some reason, th there's floating things above everyone's heads. Whatever. You put it out there. Let everybody else decide. Uh, I had that happen one time, actually. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I talked to a person at a show one time. Um, they, I, I hope they were new to comics. Oh, that they said, they what go, are these weird white things yeah, like, coming out of their... Yeah, yeah, they're like, how come, you know, they go, you know, I never understood about comics, and they were dead serious. And I go, oh, what's that? And I'm thinking something, you know, very uh, esoteric. Yeah. And, and they go, what's up with all, you know, the, the white things, and they got the words in them, and they point at the characters. How come every page, every everything, like the, all the characters, that, that happens? Why is that? And then how come they're not for every single character all the time? I was like, well... That's like what they're saying, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like, how do you describe that kind of thing without making them feel really dumb and being rude about it? Uh, and also at the same time, taking it seriously, you're kind of sizing the person up at that point and going, are, are they just, are they just like, is this a joke? <laughs> right. Are they messing with me? <laughs> yeah, or do they really not get that part? <laughs> and, and, and I was like, I was kind of laughing at first. And they're like, no, really, I don't understand. You know, what is that supposed to be? 
And they're like, aren't you supposed to just tell the story through the pictures? You know, because they're like, I see in a lot of like the Sunday strips and things I read, they don't have that. And I'm like, oh, that's where this person's coming from. Because they're right. used to like captions underneath or it's just the image and it's a silent kind of comic. And um, so, yeah, that was kind of, that was a little surreal. <laughs> the comic show, you kind of think everyone's just going to know about comic books. And then uh, you come across the person every now and then that for whatever reason, and I always wonder, do they go up to every single table and they say that same speech to everyone? Or, or was I just, for whatever reason that day, was I just the person they walk up to me and they say, hey, this looks like a guy I could ask this to. Right. <laughs> I never know. Anybody ever ask you something weird like that at a show or in a, you're in a store or anything and you feel like, why me? Why did I get asked that? Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> I, you you have some interesting conversations, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> like they look at you and you're like, "What about me?" Made them yeah. ask that. <laughs> it's very interesting. Let's see. Uh, uh, Von Dufus says, "David, grab that uh, Takamini and uh, bust out a blues riff, so Pete can sing." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe another day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. Ben says Pancake Pete has a nice ring to it. All right. Man, you guys, you guys in the pancake thing. All right. I'm going to jump forward a little bit. If you guys had a question that I skipped past, uh, please forgive me. I'm going to jump forward to uh, one of the super chats here. Oh, actually, two super chats. I want to make sure we get to these before we went to the next topic. Uh, Steven Steele, thank you again for supporting the channel. I like the feel of real feel of the real feel of comic books. I grew up in the early 60s. Oh, I would have loved to to get into comics at that point in time. Steven, you got any uh any amazing amazing issues from back then that you're still holding on to? I'd love to know. I had my uh my uncle was was huge into comics. He had uh, the first appearance of Thor, he had the first Fantastic Four issues, he had a couple early X-Men and Spider-Man issues. He just a whole ton of them, a huge comic collection from back then. And he kept them nice. At least this is how the story goes. He kept them really nice. And then one day, his older sister uh, decides uh, that that's it. Time for comic books is, is over. Ugh. They're older now. Ugh. He comes home from school one day. He's in high school. He comes home from school. They're gone. They're all in the trash. They're just done. And all kinds of other crap on top of them. And he's like, and he was horrified then. And yeah. he was like, at that time, you know, I was just upset because I loved them. And he he tells me, right? And and he's like, I I didn't think, you know, collector value, they're worth money, whatever, one day, and this and that. He just was like, oh, we, why'd you do this? I love these. These are great. And, you know, and now, <laughs> looking back, it's one of those things of I'm just like, man, you got to really just, who bite the bullet on that one and, and move forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, my mom went to like a flea market or yard sale and she found like a run of Spider-Man that was like three through 60 and picked it up for like a song, you know? Wow. So I, I had that and I got, I read all that and like sold it when I went to college, but it was, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy stuff. Absolutely. I mean, I even remember seeing when I was a kid, I saw the first appearance of Wolverine or at least the first full appearance, the one where he's fighting the Hulk. Mm. And um, it was like 75 bucks at a comic shop. And it looked like it was pretty good shape too. But I, I, at the time, like I was blown away. I was blown away. $75 for a comic book. And yeah. I loved Wolverine as a kid, but it was still one of those, like, I'm never going to get that book. you know. <laughs> but now it's, it's crazy to think of, of how much more they've gained in value. Even I think at the time they had Amazing Spider-Man um, number one, and then they had Amazing Fantasy uh, 15 and i think uh 15 i think that was like a thousand bucks and yeah. i think the first spider-man was like 250 or something like that and just as a kid again i was blown away by the prices of these things but but how how much more expensive they are now holy smokes <laughs> i remember i remember as a kid buying the overstreet price guide and just flipping through it and looking at all the covers and just imagining like how cool it would be, like what, what, what all these books are like and what stories they would tell. And like, gee, I wish I had that and that and that. That looks interesting. And Yeah, yeah. And I always looked at that type of thing too. And I'm like, oh man, I wonder what kind of stories in there that's making that thing worth so much. 
Yeah. Um, so I didn't even have the mindset of, oh, I want to be surrounded by them. So I feel like Uncle Scrooge in the, in the money bin. It was more just about why is that so valuable? I wonder what the what, what kind of story is in that? What kind of character is in there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's crazy stuff. Uh, Michael McLaughlin, thank you again for supporting the channel. Says, I dig that idea for a dragon detective story. All right. Well, Dave, you get right on it. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> we have one reader. One one reader will be interested in that story. All right. That That's worth it. There we go. Uh, Uper says, uh, if I have two orders, uh, how can I move all the pre-orders to one order and then have all the ones you have in stock sent to me? Okay. So if you have two orders right now uh, pending on the site, um, are those both orders that nothing from them has been shipped? If they're both orders that nothing from them has been shipped, uh, we'll ship you what's available right now. So that'll kind of, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to tell me anything. I'll just, we'll, we'll sort through that and we'll be shipping out the order soon. If let's say the other order that's still waiting, let's say that has a partially shipped uh, amount on there. That's basically like we already kind of shipped that with a previous order. So now that order is going to kind of be piggybacked onto your next order, what's remaining. So it can get complicated if you start doing the whole one at a time, kind of piggybacking onto one after the other. Um, but if you, if that's the scenario, you can place another order um, and then we'll just ship whatever is available. So it kind of gets a little bit complicated once you start having pre-order mixed with uh in stock order mm -hmm. over and over and over again um but i recommend setting up your pre-orders separately if you can help it or you'd have to be patient on it and just you can get the free shipping but you'd have to wait so but uh thank you for the question appreciate it Let's see. Uh, Al says uh, those morality tales sound a lot like the ones my mom tells me. They all they all end with and then you die. <laughs> yeah, you know it's that's that's how it is. <laughs> it's true. It's all like a, a weird German folk tale. Everything ends with you're horribly disfigured or you're dead. <laughs> uh, Christian Nomad says if I could get a chair number one blank cover signed by Pete, I gladly pay extra for it you know what that's a good idea i should probably put an option for that on the site maybe even put an option too to do a to do a uh, a sketch on there in case someone wants that that might even be a good idea for an indiegogo campaign too actually now that i think about it to have all of us have our number ones with a uh, a sketch cover variant oh yeah yeah that could be cool that could be kind of cool i think people would support that and even if you're a writer, I mean, I'm sure you could still sketch something. Uh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> even if it's a stick figure, you know, you could, you could sketch something. <laughs> I'm thinking about the dragon detective story, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Name of the Rose is essentially a medieval detective story, right? And then, mm -hmm. you know, like to put like Name of the Rose meets Dragon Slayer, that's a small step to the left, but they could coexist in that world. Yeah. 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 See, I have good ideas. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why people are like, hey, Pete, just tell me what to make and I'll make it. Yeah. Like, you got good weird ideas. <laughs> I got like 40 ideas for stories that I just don't have the time to make. Um, half the time I see them come to life through someone else making them. I'll be like, I had that idea eight years ago. <laughs> but time isn't your friend. So, you know, you can only do so much. Uh, but it's funny, though. It's, it's funny to see those kinds of things uh, come to life through someone else. It's, it's like Inception, you know. Right. Uh, Ashen says, will you consider doing a themed comic that collect uh, and reprint stories found? And it came out on Wednesday, like an all horror giant. Yeah, that's kind of the idea I'm tossing around, you know, maybe uh, see who wants to get their stuff reprinted or collected again. Um, sometimes people either don't want to or the rights are tied up somewhere else or the creative teams fell through and everyone's kind of weird and no one wants to really, you know, agree on anything anymore. Um, you know, so it, it could be tough sometime, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. That's even the reason why sometimes it's really difficult to get these issues reprinted uh, when they're in anthology, because all of a sudden then you got to start asking everybody, is it okay again to reprint this? Because you're all kind of not really in contract with alternates, a very fluid type of contract. And um, sometimes it's not. Sometimes they're like, you know, I'll turn as the devil. I don't want to re have you reprint my book, uh, my story in, in, in that book. It's, you guys are awful. And I'm like, all right, well, you could have just said no. 
<laughs> They're like, yeah, but what would the fun have been if I just said, no, I got to make sure that you know I hate you so you never ask again. <laughs> and, you know, it's uh, you just kind of shrug when that happens and you move on. You ask the next, the next person, you know, and uh, you're like, well, you, you too. And that's it. And you're like, just told him. You told him. It's like that that scene in uh, Seinfeld with um, the jerk store. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know you just at first you're dumbfounded, right? And then you're just you're, you're somewhere later on in the day, and you're like, "Well, the jerk store is running out of you." Yes, yeah, I should have said that. I think the French have a word for things that you think of that you should have said as you're walking down the stairs in rebuttal. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Do they? I yeah. Oh wow! All right. Yeah, I want to learn that word. I could just yeah. like shout it at people, <laughs> you know, and then they won't know. And by the time they, they go to look it up, it'll be too late. I'll be gone. Well, no, it's just a word for people that have that feeling. It's not actually something you could say. Yeah, like Schadenfreude, you know, like that yeah, kind of right. word. Yeah, right, Schadenfreude, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, you know, and I would just shout that at people. And this way they won't even know. They, they think like I'm insulting them on some kind of a really deep, intense level. And then they would look it up and they'd be like, could you believe he said this to me? And then like a friend would be like, that just means he couldn't think what the hell to say at that point in time. He's frustrated. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, but see, I'll, I'll be gone. So it doesn't matter at that point. I would have had the last laugh. And they'd be all disturbed. And that's, that's what counts, right? It doesn't matter if you say something logical back to people. This is 2020. It's who gets the most disturbed in the end. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. It's, it's who gets the most bothered by it. And then if you can help it, who gets the most likes on Twitter? Right. <laughs> who got the most likes from the insult at the end? And that's who wins. <laughs> that, that's what the kids tell me nowadays. That's all that counts. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're living in a, a, new, uh, a new era. <laughs> a Bronze Age kid says, just got my first sub box. I missed Trespasser first time around, but just read the giant collection and thought it was phenomenal. The world is really rich for storytelling. Hopefully we get more. Yeah, I hope they do more too. Um, I'm not quite sure though if they will. I know that they're all, uh, and by they're all, I mean the creative team of Trespasser, uh, Justin Ryan, uh, Christian Rossi, who's also the artist of Voidwalker, and DC Hopkins, who did the lettering. I know they're all working on another story. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they're going to continue anything with Trespasser. I know Justin kind of likes the idea of it hanging out there, open to interpretation. I kind of like that idea a bit too. Um, I think it's kind of like uh, when people ask me, well, will you do a prequel or a sequel to the chair? And I'm like, I feel like either one would kind of ruin the main story. Mm. You, would either, you would either over or under explain what occurs in just that moment of time. And I feel like trespassers is kind of the same. It would, it would, it would kind of do a disservice to the main story. So even though you want to see more or you want to, just because you like the characters of the world or whatever, at the same time, I feel like it's a story that makes you think and then you start inventing your own version of what occurs. Mm. And then whatever version comes out is now the version. Right. And you're like, ah, I like the one that was in my head better. And yeah. How often does that happen with things, you know? And I, I would hate the story to go that route. Yeah, you don't want to be like a Highlander 2 where you come up with this cockamamie explanation for why they're all immortal and then nobody, it's like people are so like offended by how stupid it is that they're like, well, we'll never mention that again. Forget we said that, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to go in there and, uh, and not that this has anything to do with Highlander, but I don't want to go in there and, and start giving midichlorians to, to characters, you know. And yeah, right. <laughs> uh, <you> know? <laughs> not that there's, there's been much worse things at this point done to the Star Wars universe than midichlorians, but we won't get into that on this episode of the show. <laughs> but I don't want to do that. I don't want to have that happen. I don't want. I don't think some writers too want to have that happen. Also, I think they just want. They just want to kind of have it out there, and yeah, that it's better the, in the hands of the reader. There's a writer that that talks about, and I'm trying to think of his name. Um, Johnny Depp was in a movie that was like an adaption of his novel, but I can't think of the name of the writer or the novel. But um, it, what was the movie, The Ninth Gate? Okay. I think that mm. was an adaption of the novel. Anyhow, I was reading an interview with this guy, and he was talking about how as a writer, sometimes you don't want to explain everything. It's more like 
you want your reader to look over the side of a ship and see something shiny through the water that may or may not be treasure. And that's mm. actually the intended effect. And that's what he was going for in certain parts of that novel to sort yeah. of hint at certain things and let the reader ultimately decide, you know, what it was and what it meant. Yeah, I definitely get that. Yeah, because because it's those little things, even even the chair, I, I leave that, you know, I know kind of what I meant when I wrote it, but I don't care whether or not the reader gets it the way I intended for them to get it because I, pr I purposefully wrote the whole thing to be interpreted by the reader. So even though it's like, yes, there's a certain way that the story goes, in the end, I don't care if, if the reader says, well, you know, I think this is this and that represents that or that character was going through that or maybe that character was uh, alive or they were a ghost or they were a figment of the imagination or whatever. They come up with whatever kind of interpretation they want. DLA, the Club Dumas. Thank you. Yes, that is the novel in question that was adapted. Um, yeah, and sometimes too, like creators are so close to what they're creating that they themselves are unaware or the, the last person you want to ask about, you know, what, what the actual point is that they're trying to make because they may be too close to see it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, and they end up getting kind of, sometimes they get offended by it or they really hung up and they're like, you just didn't understand what I was, you know, trying to convey. And they think that it's, it's, it's an intentional diss from the reader, but it's just, they're so immersed in the world that you've created that the, the characters have taken on a life past, which you've intended them to be. So, I think there's no higher praise, if anything, than someone saying, oh, this is what I got out of it. That's great. That means that you now, uh, you accelerated the form of just creating something, and now it is art, because now right. it is interpreted by someone else through their lens, which is, that's, I don't think there's anything greater than that. I mean, it's the same thing with a song. How many songs do we hear? And and then you read, you know, what they were going through or what they intended the song or the lyrics to mean and this, and you're like, I never would have guessed that in a million years. <laughs> yeah. The perfect example, I think, is Fight Club, you know, the both the novel and the movie. I mean, one of my favorite movies of all time. And I love that movie and I know exactly what it means to me, but I don't necessarily know that what it means to me is what the writer of the movie or the director of the movie or the writer of the movie of the book actually intended you know what i mean like yeah. it might be but maybe not yeah and i think uh i think that's part of what makes art great that's what makes art art it, it's because we all can interpret it in a different way based on the experiences that we've had um, and to lose a, a the ability to do that and to just have it come out like it's a math equation where it's like, we all have to get the same answer, you understand, otherwise it's wrong. <laughs> that just ruins art. That's not fun. That's not, it doesn't touch your soul anymore. It doesn't, you know, it's the reason sometimes some people will be very affected emotionally by something. And then uh, other people will be like, I don't understand. This is, this is crap. I don't like this at all. Uh, it doesn't right. speak to me, you know, but other people it will. So Why are there these big white balloons coming out of everybody's mouth? I'd yeah, rather eat yeah. pancakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and some people they, they care less. They're like, you know, why aren't these pancakes? Why are these pages? They should be pancakes. And I, I can't. I don't have a good argument back for that, but because they should be pancakes. You're right. It shouldn't be pages. Uh, pancakes are better than than pages pieces of paper. But at the same time, you know, this is this is what we have to work with. We, we until we can print comics on pancakes, we, this is paper. This is what we have. We're very, you know, we're very backward still as, as a society. Uh, once we get into the future, it, like you know, it's twenty twenty, but feels like uh, twelve hundred. <laughs> <laughs> the dark ages are right around the corner. Uh, you know, it feels like like we're gonna get there in about a hundred years, and we can print uh, comic books on pancakes. And then when that happens, you know, Ross will be happy. Get your pancakes and your comics in one shot. All right. Okay. So uh, on to the the topic at hand. I'll get back to you guys in the chat. Uh, I am starting up, uh, or I should say, restarting my YouTube channel. Uh, I've changed it over. It's uh, publishing Pete now. And uh, let me put the link here so you guys can subscribe. And the reason for that is I'm going to start migrating a bunch of videos over to this channel. 
I'm going to start making the Alterna channel a little bit more um, Alterna centric. Not that it's not Alterna centric as it is. I think 99% of the videos on here have something to do with Alterna. But my draw streams, I'm going to do live streams on here and then re upload and chop them up and put them as just draw streams and stuff on this page. Uh, when I interview other creators who are not Alterna creators, I'll upload those videos and migrate them over to this channel. And then eventually when I do uh, any kind of streams with other creators that are not Alterna creators, I'll be doing those on my personal channel and things like that. Uh, the biggest reason that I just didn't start to do that at first was because of the fact that this channel started, you know, tried to grow it. I, the Alterna channel was kind of taking over on the priority scale in terms of what to do. But now that, now that Alterna is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, I have to kind of delineate what's with what. And even things like Open Mic Monday, I'm, I haven't had that on in a while, but I'm going to start having that on my channel, my personal channel, instead of the Alterna channel. Because I'm also finding people, um, they're starting to think when they get on the Alterna channel, when I have a show, um, I'll get messages. And it's not from everybody, but from some people, more than enough people that I feel comfortable, uh, I, I don't feel comfortable with doing this anymore. Um, who think, okay, I've been on the Alterna channel. Now when I submit to you, uh, I have an automatic in. I'm basically an Alterna creator now. I don't want to send that message anymore. Um, I, I don't think that I ever intended to send that message. I don't think I ever purposefully sent that message. But even if I'm not purposefully sending that message, I think for some people, they're reading into it that this isn't just kind of a fun comic book type channel that also focuses primarily on Alterna comics and is part of the larger indie comics community. Um, some people were actually thinking this was my foot in the door. And then when they would get a rejection from a submission, they would get very upset. So I don't want to have that happen anymore. So it's going to be separated. Uh, I'm still going to be on here. I'm going to actually be focusing a lot more on both uh, the YouTube channels of my own and Alternus channel. I'm going to be trying to do, uh, I'm going to try to do at least a half hour to an hour of a show every day on, on one channel or the other, mostly spending time on this channel and mm. doing different kinds of Alterna centric streams, especially until there's more, um, there's more of an up in terms of the subscribers and the view count, things like that uh, on the Publish and Pete channel. But uh, when I do have other interviews or whatever it is, like I said, the open mic Monday, um, that'll be on my personal channel. Because I don't want someone, again, popping on Open Mic Monday and then they're thinking like, oh, this is basically, uh, I'm an alternate creator now. So now when I submit something, it's like, hey, I was on your channel, remember? And your audience uh, is used to me and you said my book was good. And, you know, how come you said it was good there? But now it won't work for your publishing line. And it's like, there's different things between me appreciating, you know, what you're doing and then me saying, okay, well, let's, let's do something business wise. And, and you can meet a production schedule and the standards of quality and all this other stuff that's involved with me picking out a book for the Alterna lineup. So I don't want that confusion anymore. And that's the way it is. And uh, it is what it is. <laughs> Made in hell says it's a shame that you guys all have to withdraw to protect yourselves. Yeah. It's, you know, and, and we'll still have great content on the channel. And it'll still be just like the way it is right now, conversational with Dave and, and other people as well and, and various topics that have to do with Alterna and other things. But there's more of a separation and there's going to be a, a lot of the videos migrating over to my personal channel too, especially as Alterna starts working into the, the aspect of um, Alterna distribution and things like that too. I really want to make sure there's that separation because even with that, some people are thinking, well, if Alterna is distributing, does that mean they're basically going to be the publisher and they do all this stuff and this and that? It's like, no, 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 it's a separate thing. So there's got to be all these kind of little separations along the way. But um, thank you guys for subbing. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. It's not, it, most people I don't think are going to notice much of a difference at all. It's just something I'm more telling you guys. And um I'll still be doing sketches and stuff and a lot of live streams will happen here and then they'll be taken down and chopped up, and ported over into my personal channel. And then eventually uh, I'll be just doing my kind of live streams and drawing streams 
on my channel. Let's see. Uh, Made in Hell says uh, respecting boundaries is a forgotten is a forgotten art. It seems uh, sometimes, sometimes. Uh, Rooster Puncher says I finally made it. Hey Spencer, how's it going? All right, uh, Randy says everybody hit that like button. Yeah, I appreciate it if you do. It helps the channel to grow. And um, yeah, so I got a couple videos on here now. I took down a bunch of videos from the uh, the, the Publishing Pete channel a, a while ago. Um, uh, much to my chagrin, it deleted the twelve hundred watch hours that I had on them. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you need them in a year, and uh, the accumulated year of them. It, I just I look back and I was like, they're all gone. That's great. Oh well. So starting from from zero again, I think I'm up to like two watch hours now. So that's pretty killer. Two watch hours, sweet. <laughs> Just like twelve hundred, only eleven ninety eight less. <laughs> uh, but we'll get back there. I'm not. It's not a high priority for me necessarily to to monetize the channel. It's more about the separation and things like that at this point. Um, and of course, Geronimo draws uh, Ryan Wynn, uh, Keith Gleason. They all have channels too. Um, Dave's got a channel. I don't know if you're building your channel back up or if you're going to start putting more content on there or if anything's consistent like that. But if you are, uh, let me know and we'll start. Uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to relaunch and I'll I'll let you know before I do that. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, a lot of alternate creators are uh, are getting on board and making YouTube stuff, which is great because that's where where everybody seems to enjoy the the virtual convention type experience that I think. You know, it really wasn't possible to do this beforehand. It was, you know, you saw someone at a show and, and that was about it. Yeah. 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 So, all right. Let's see. And then, um, oh, let's see. Rooster Puncher says, oh man, that Void Walker emoji is too cool. Oh, is that the first time you're seeing it? Yeah. Everybody uh, that's got the memberships, you can throw up the uh, Void Walker emoji and, and greet Spencer. We're going to get one more member. Not only do we upgrade the channel, the StreamYard service, and we get 40 members, but we also get to add on an emoji. So that emoji is going to be a Tinseltown emoji. This way, when Dave Ooh. pops on, All you right. guys can greet him with uh, some Tinseltown love. Nice. And uh, Rooster Puncher says, I'm coming back to streaming soon, too. Great. Awesome. Good stuff. See, uh, Statistical Zero says, I have to head to bed. Have a great night to Pete, David, and Chad. Have a great night. You, too. Thanks for watching. See, uh, Mr. Self Loather says, please don't chop up live streams or at least have the full stream available somewhere. I can't always watch it all live. All right. Uh, maybe what I'll do then is uh, I'll put the whole live stream onto my channel. I'll port it over and then I'll still chop it up anyway. So it's still kind of character by character. Like I'll do like these quick sketch card things and I'll just chop up character by character, but I'll also have the whole thing up if that's a. Uh, if, if you want to watch like the whole hour or whatever it is, that's a, that's no problem. Thanks for letting me know. I didn't think anyone would want that, you know? So, uh, if I at least get, you know, one person who appreciates that, that's no sweat off my back. I could just put that right up there. See, uh, Rooster Puncher says for the first time in a decade, I'm getting commission requests too. Nice. It's been a crazy month. There you go. Yeah. Spencer's a really good artist uh, for those that don't know. Oh, and thank you guys too. It looks like I got twenty something uh, subscribers through the course of yapping away about it. Uh, I'll throw up the link one more time. Uh, yeah, again, please subscribe if you can. I'm trying to build that channel up. We're gonna start putting content every day. Is gonna be something new uploaded around noon time. Um, so I've kind of got things on a schedule for a bit. But uh, yeah, I've got no problem with putting those uh, those bigger live streams and moving them on over. If you guys want to check them out, that's cool. I didn't know that. I didn't know people would actually go back in there and uh, go, hey, I missed that whole thing. I want to listen to to all of it. See, uh, Jam says, I like to put on a nice long live stream when I draw or color. Oh, it's great to know. You guys are the best. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. No, hey, I, love I, guys. I, I see a question from Kevin Newby a little bit back, about 836. Let's see here. Uh, so your time, that would be 11.36 my time. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, Kevin. Okay. Kevin says, I kind of want to be a comic writer in the future. I could use some advice on what I need to do. Sorry if this sounds off topic. No, it's not off topic. Uh, everything is on topic. On, on Friday especially. It's agenda-free Friday. So you guys can do whatever you want to do. Um, Dave, I'll let you handle this one. 
Oh, okay. Um, well, I would say uh, you should obviously, you know, uh, you should read a lot of comics if you're not familiar with the the uh, the format and whatnot. But uh, beyond that, a good a good book to start with is Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics because uh, he kind of breaks down the language of comics and uh, how how uh, comic books work to tell stories. And uh, you know, then the next thing you should do is probably look online and and find some examples of comic scripts because um, comic stri scripts are kind of a weird format in that they're not intended uh, for anybody but the artist. Um, and then, you know, you when as soon as you have an idea for a, a comic story, you should try to find an artist because that's ultimately where you have to start. Um, and I'd say the most valuable piece of advice I got was, um, you know, when uh, Neil Gaiman was trying to figure out how to write comics, he asked Alan Moore, and Alan Moore went back and uh, found this guide that Mort Weisinger had given to DC in the in the fifties, and he said uh, the the rule is two hundred and ten words per page, subdivided by panel. You never want to have more words than that because otherwise the words start to overwhelm the art, and you want to make sure the art and the words are working together, and um, but then Brian so, Michael Bendis came along and said, nuts to all that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's exceptions <laughs> to the rule. But, I, you know, at the same time, if it was good enough for Alan Moore to sit there and count his words, and, you know, if you've got more words than that in a panel, then maybe that's a sign that you need to subdivide what you're trying to say into two different panels. Um, and the other, the other thing I would, I would say is when you're, when you're plotting out a comic book page, you always want to be thinking about not only how you're motivating the reader to turn – from one page to the next, but also uh, how you're guiding their eye, what you're using to motivate them to, you know, how to look at each panel and then how, and giving them a motivation to go from panel to panel. And that could be something as simple as character A asks a question in panel A, and then in panel B, the character is talking to answers them. Um, or it could be something, you know, much more dramatic than that. But Oh, yeah, good advice. Solid advice. I can't add anything else to that. That's good stuff. But yeah, uh, thanks, Kevin, for your question. Appreciate it. Hope that helped you out a bit. And um, you know, just just find your style. And and seriously, the the more you read, the better you'll write. I know that might sound a little weird, but it's true. And, and don't read just comics. Yeah, yeah. You know, the phone book is great. You still get that. <laughs> Dictionary is fantastic too, and I and I mean that actually seriously. I used to read the dictionary as a kid. I was one of those weird little kids that read dictionaries and encyclopedias. Yeah, and um and what a load of crap it did for me. It didn't do anything good for me at all. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you again, Kevin. Really appreciate that. Uh, SDA says uh, tell that to Chris Claremont. <laughs> um, I love uh, I love Claremont's writing though far more than I do uh, Bendis. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> to each their own. Uh, let's see. Uh, now we've got some. Uh, we got some big, big news. This is the the. I guess the the final bit of big news for the night. All right. Okay. So, on Alterna Comics, we've got a thing known as certified retailers. A certified retailer is when a comic shop carries all of our titles, our new titles, the single issues, and also has copies for the shelf. So when we put together our store directory back in whenever that was, a year or two ago, uh, we had you know a lot of shops on there. It was great. But I found that a lot of these shops maybe had a graphic novel or one issue, or maybe they just stocked a couple of issues for a pull list customer. They never had anything on the shelf. So we would have customers say, look, I went to this store. It says that they carry your stuff. But when I ask them, you know, where are the Alterna titles? They don't really have anything. Um, sometimes they don't even know that they have your books. So, right. you know, what's up with the list? So we scaled back the list. I wanted to just include stores that I could have customers go to and that they would actually have the books and that they could go there and know that if this store did not have a book on a shelf, it was sold out. And the customer would then tell the retailer about it and they would be familiar with us enough that they could go, okay, I'm going to order that. So 
That's why this Alterna certified retailer program opened up. That's what this is for. Now we recently added a pretty big retailer. Now you can see not every state has one. Uh, a couple states have several. Um, not every state, like I said, has one. Uh, we've got Buzzard Comics in the UK. There are only international certified retailer. Hopefully we can get Radar Comics in Spain. Uh, they're in mm. Madrid in Spain on there. That would be wonderful. Hopefully I can get a, a Canadian store. That would be fantastic too. I'm still working something out with two of them and trying to see and poke and prod, but at the same time, I don't want to poke too much because of the fact that everything's so crazy right now. Right, uh, right. So yeah, so it's kind of tough. But we added a really big, big store today, uh, DCBS. They signed on today with us to be a certified retailer. They're going to carry everything Alterna, and they placed a massive purchase order with us today. It was pretty big. And for those of you that don't know DCBS, that's DCBService.com. They're going to start having all of our stuff listed on their site. Um, I've actually worked with Cameron and Christina before in the long, long ago before we had Alterna distributed by a diamond and they used to order graphic novels directly through us and they had in stock trades.com, all that kind of stuff. I've met them at Baltimore comic con. They were very nice people. It was good stuff. And uh, they've since grown their business considerably. I know a lot of people order their books through DCBS. So if you're one of those people where you get a bunch of other books too, uh, in a couple of weeks, you'll be able to get alternative books through them as well. Um, so that's something that's pretty huge for us, especially considering that, you know, we're told, well, you're, you're going to leave diamond. Well, you know, uh, you're not going to get into any stores. Well, we're, we're already into a bunch of stores and we're in one of the largest retailers on the planet now at this point. Now they don't have a physical storefront, but they sell a lot of books to people all over the world. So this is something that's a big step for us. I hope you guys, if you do order from them, I hope it's something that means something to you too. And you can feel free to order whatever you'd like from them as well. And maybe just get some stuff from Alterna if they're sold out or if you're missing whatever. Uh, but this is a, a pretty great thing and we're all excited about it. And uh, the next step is to try to get Midtown Comics on board as well. Now we are not distributing through Lunar or UCS, which is, uh, I forget which one, I think Lunar is DCBS, I think UCS is Midtown, uh, which if anything, I get them reversed because I think UCS, I think DCBS, and then I think Lunar Midtown, like mm -hmm. Lunar Moon M Midtown, my brain works in weird ways, and I think that they're reversed. So I don't, I don't deal with them as far as distributing goes. We distribute two DCBS, DCBS sells to the reader. We don't distribute through them and then out to stores. Everything we do is direct. So we, we don't use anyone else to distribute. We just ship stuff out directly to stores. And uh, we're going to be keeping that way for the foreseeable future. Uh, I can't see things getting you know, much better or different or improving or anything like that. Uh, different, yeah, I, I guess I could see it getting different gonna from what i'm seeing so far it's gonna get worse before it gets better but uh we're gonna be working with retailers directly and so far it's been great um adam says uh good to know my lcs elusive comics is certified yeah and um i think they actually got to order our newest um i gotta tap them on the shoulder to order our newest books that just came out um like i said everyone is so just everything's all over the place uh, so i don't blame any retailers right now for getting kind of behind a bit. Uh, I think everyone is scrambling here and there. But it's uh, it's good to know that we've got these guys uh, supporting Alterna and that they're going to be carrying our books and listing them on their site and that customers can actually uh, get them through there. Uh, so Dale says DCBS does UCS distribution for DC. Um, so uh, it says, uh, yeah, you're right. Lunar is DCBS. Yeah. So I'm going to have to how I remembered it before, I'm going to have to flip it. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, remember it the way you remember it, and then flip it, and then you're right. Uh, so, yeah, Lunar is DCBS, and UCS is Midtown. I don't know if any other publisher is going through either distributor right now, too. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. But uh, either way, we're not distributing through them. We're distributing to them. So they're going to get our books, and then they're going to sell them out. But... Um, yeah, this is a big step. This was exciting uh, to finally seal the deal today. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. 
it's part of a big uh, a big bright future for Alterna and then eventually Alterna distribution too, because all the connections we make with retailers just segues into connections for Alterna distribution. And, um, and that's something that's gonna be a, a kind of a good thing for a lot of indie creators out there. They're gonna actually be able to get books in a lot of these stores, especially the Alterna certified stores that we have a, a great relationship with will be able to really kind of push a lot of these uh, these creator-owned indie titles through alternative distribution, books that are not necessarily on our publishing, not necessarily, definitely not part of alternative publishing, they'll be able to also get into stores and be sold online, a lot of other great stuff too. Um, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's some of the big news for tonight. We'll be announcing that on Twitter tomorrow. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure that'll be exciting. I'm sure that'll be something that people talk about uh, in in good and bad ways, perhaps. <laughs> I can see some people being upset about that and thinking like, oh, it's going to hurt the, the brick and mortar uh, retailers. But all I could think is, well, we distributed to them before because we distributed to Diamond and Diamond sold to DCBS. So right. why wouldn't we want to sell to everyone that was carrying our books before? That's kind of the goal. So, yeah, whatever gets people reading comic books, the whole industry, that should be the concern, is let's get our books into the hands of as many people as we can. And whoever can do that, whoever's going to sell to them, whatever it is, that's what we need. This whole kind of mindset of like, oh, only the right kinds of places, the right kinds of people, et cetera, et cetera. That's what counts. Um, that's such a weird backwards way to do it. So this is something that I think is great, and, and I'm excited about it, and, uh, and I know everybody at Alterna is excited about it, too. Uh, Mr. Self-Loader says, my LCS puts Alterna Comics in the worst place after Wednesday. They put them in the trash? <laughs> That's the worst place I could think of. Uh, where do they put them? <laughs> I'm curious now. Do they put them next to, uh, next to like the Marvel books that don't sell? Because that would be a great place. Because then you go and you look and you see, oh, look at those. Those are great. You know, alternative books are great. I'll get those instead. I'm very curious as to where where they would go. Uh, let's see. Youper says growth of Alterna will help the comic shops. Absolutely. Yeah, growth of any publisher will help the comic shops. Well, SDA says uh, in the restroom. That's a really bad place. Yeah, that's a <laughs> – I think that actually might be kind of worse than the trash. <laughs> No offense to people who do their comic toilet reading kind of thing that they've got going. I know some people do that still, which is uh, as as flattering as it is horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mighty Joe says, I heard some smaller indie pubs are considering the new distributors over Diamond. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ross says uh, they put them next to the sausages. They're the worst <laughs> place. You know, like, a, like a bratwurst. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I get, right. I get the joke. In between yeah. the sausages and the pancakes. Yeah. 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 It's all about breakfast with this guy. Ross is like breakfast for, for lunch, breakfast for dinner, breakfast for breakfast. I like breakfast all kinds of different times too, but come on, Ross. <laughs> Christian Nomad says, uh, mine put them in a corner next to the art books. Okay. Hmm. Okay. That's strange. That's strange. You know, when it's a book that, is a really uh, like like alternative books are really good impulse buy books. They should just have you know a little thing set up, a little countertop display or whatever, and then have them as an easy add-on sale. Some of the smartest shops that really do well with our books and sell a hell out of them. That's what they do. They put them right by the register, right there with the price tag sign thing, whatever. They make one up, and then they say you know just two dollars, dollar whatever it is that they want to sell them for, and um. And they sell a ton of them. Some of them even do like a three for five deal or, or whatever, mm. stuff like that. Let's see. Uh, Mr. Self Loather says uh, they're on the low shelf. I had to kneel to get to the three mighty mascots issues, but I'm so glad they had it. Oh, on the low shelf. Hopefully they did that because they figured they were all ages titles. And the mindset was that kids would see it. Uh, but if all of the titles go there, that's kind of odd. I wonder if they do that for the other ones too. Um, either way, uh, make sure to send me uh, send me their information, and I will talk to them very sternly through an email and let them know what are you doing putting them on the low shelf. 
<laughs> Adam Warlock says, if Alterna comics are placed next to Tom King comics at your LCS, they look amazing by comparison. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Don't get me statted. No, no, no. Uh, Dale A says, uh, mine puts them in the third shelf of trade paperbacks uh, next to the coloring books. Uh, interesting. It's very interesting seeing how... Uh, uh, how all these books are getting laid out in stores. Uh, Simonon says, restroom is a great place. You can grab one as you enter to read and also in case of emergency. <laughs> hey, you know, what do you want to do with the book, Simonon? As long as you pay for them, you get to to, to wipe however you feel. <laughs> Watch out for paper cuts. I don't want to get any, like, lawsuits or anything over you guys getting paper cuts because you don't understand, uh, you know, the the, the 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 civilization that we live in right now and you use toilet paper the toilet paper is back in stock right is it still yeah. a shortage by you yeah it's okay uh, no it's it's all right now okay good you know because i knew you were running through out of copies of tinseltown very fast and i was very worried about you for a second there <laughs> it's like there's no way he's selling like 50 of these a week there's got to be something going on with the toilet paper <laughs> then i was very i was very confused when you wanted 60 copies of the chair instead <laughs> Yeah, huh, huh, huh. I was like that Luca really. I gotta watch out for him. Yeah, I mean, the paper shortage. He uses up all the Alterna books. <laughs> just, just wet them a little bit, you know. Then they're not so bad. <laughs> I don't speak from experience either, folks. Yeah. Dave's like, I'm just gonna let that one hang there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Right. So everybody, uh, yeah, that's some of the big news tonight. So we've left Comixology. We've got books back in stock on alternaaccess.com. We've got DCBS now as a certified retailer carrying our books on their site. They're going to be getting in a big shipment in a couple of weeks, and you guys are going to be able to order them uh, right through their site too. And also, we are going to start migrating some of these videos over to uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, which is just youtube.com slash Peter Um Make sure to subscribe on there. There's going to be a, a whole lot of things and whatever, and that'll be that. Uh, so we are going to be closing out the show tonight. And uh, I want to share one thing before we go, which would be uh, the Etsy shop of one Dave Lucarelli. That is inside uh, the chat right now. So you guys can check that out. Dave's got a great Etsy shop on there. Uh, what kind of stuff do you have on there? Mind if I open it up and check yeah, it out? Yeah, go for it, man. Sure. Let's see. All right. Let's take a look at this. This is Abacab Studios. What's that? Uh, what's Abacab mean? Uh, you know, it doesn't really mean anything. I just I just took it because it's actually a song form, right? A B A. A B A, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And because I have a music background, that's kind of, you know, you always want an A name that's at the start of the catalog, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. So, um, yeah, so you can get autographed uh, copies of Tinseltown, the series, the graphic novel. You can get some cool uh, Tinseltown swag, like those badges that you see there. Um, the other book that Henry and I do um, is Children's Vampire Hunting Brigade. Henry actually designed a face mask. It's uh, based from, from that book there that you can get. And uh, yeah, I got some, some other cool, uh, cool things that you can get, some Tinseltown limited edition uh, prints including one by our own Mr. Ryan Wynn. And, uh, yeah, you know, check it out. See see what uh, what I got up there, and you might, might want to get something. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, you can get all this great stuff signed by Dave. Uh, we don't have anything signed by Dave on the Alterna Access site, so make sure to get it here instead. You can get, looks like you got the issues up here. Yep. You can get them signed. You can get the graphic novel signed. That's good and stuff. And I'll... I'll throw in a copy of it came out on a Wednesday too with a pinboy story for either the along with the full set of Tinseltown or the graphic novel. Oh, there you go. At so, first I thought you you meant it came out on a Wednesday number two, and I was gonna be like, you're just gonna give a forty dollar issue away. Wow, this guy so yeah, generous. Man. Slapped. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that pinboy story was great. People really loved it. Oh, thanks, man. Let's see. Uh, Sci-fi for me says uh, Abacab is a good Genesis song too. That it is. Yeah. Uh, Adam says David Tinseltown was the first Alterna comic that I read. Cool. Awesome. Well, hopefully not the last. Nice. 
Uh, Metatron says, uh, what? $40. Yeah, it came out on a Wednesday. Number two is probably our most rare. Uh, number three is also rare, too, because there's about two stories in there that we can't reprint. Um, so we can't go back to print with it. It doesn't make sense to do it because the, the issue would be too short. But it came out on a Wednesday. Number two is pretty much we can't go back to print on any of it because mm. of rights issues and, and all this craziness and whatnot. So it's uh, the issue is what it is. It's about 4,000 that got printed. And um, if you have a newsstand version in particular, uh, that's crazy rare. So mm. that's probably going to be worth even more. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. Cause some people, uh, I just, I got a message today of someone saying, you know, alternate your issues are never going to be worth anything. You should make them even cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I see that and I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, that's the craziest angle I've ever seen to try to get comics for even less. Uh, kudos to you <laughs> for being so bold. You know, imagine if I was like, yeah, you know, what? you're right. I should make him like 75 cents because they're not going to be worth anything. And he's yeah. like, okay, hey, yes, yes. Make them 75 cents. <laughs> <laughs> he gets all the copies and then all of a sudden they're all up on eBay for 10 bucks a piece. You know, that's how that would go. But uh, yeah, it's funny to see issues like that. And, and even uh, there's a couple graphic novels that are really rare from, from back in the day that I'll see them every now and then on, on eBay. Um, we had a trading card set that came out in our fifth year, I think around okay. 2009 or something. And I always look to see if anybody ever puts those on eBay and I never find any, any of them ever on eBay. So that's super, super rare. Only 250 sets were made. So if you ever see a, a trading card set, it's just a five card set. You ever see that up there? Um, you know, let me know. Cause uh, there's a bunch of uh, 250 sketch cards too were made. Uh, a bunch of uh, artists pitched in and, and made sketch cards and, and they got sets and they got all kinds of cool stuff out of it. And we got, we got those floating around. I don't know who's got them. I don't know where they are, but a lot of the sets sold that we sold out of the whole, the whole run, but um, it's very interesting. But anyway, great stuff here on the Etsy. And uh, everybody check it out. I'll pop up that link one more time. Yeah, all right. There you go. It's right in the chat. And everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we covered a whole lot of stuff. And uh, Dave, thank you as well, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for popping in. Yeah, man. And, my uh, pleasure. Anything you'd like to say before we end the show? Uh, no, just everybody out there. Thanks for reading and stay safe. All right. Yeah, I agree. Everybody, thank you so much. Stay safe out there. Take care of each other. And, uh, of course, visit AlternaAccess.com. We've got, uh, oh, well, Free Comic Friday ended 20 minutes ago. Oh, well. Uh, well, we still got great stuff on there. Uh, right now, we've got the grand reopening sale. So uh, use uh, I let all the newsletter folks have a couple of days at it first. You guys got uh, the first, uh, before anything sold out, you guys got to have a go at it. But use coupon code HELLO again, all caps, no spaces. Save 15% on your entire order, no matter what you order on the site. Uh, the sale ends at the end of this month. And that's for our grand reopening because we've got all kinds of great new additions on the site. Make it really, really easy for you guys. Add to cart quantity, all that great stuff. It's really simple now. Uh, easy peasy on that site. Uh, everybody, thanks again for watching. Uh, I'll be back on again sometime this weekend. I don't know if we'll be back tomorrow, but definitely over the weekend and everybody take it easy and uh dave again thanks buddy appreciate My it pleasure yep till next and time absolutely and everybody else we'll see you when we see you have a good night <laughs>